Recording in progress.
The session is called to order now. Please stand for the singing of our national anthem. Bayang magiliw, pero sa silang anan, alam ng puso sa titig mo'y buhay. Lupang hinirang, buyan ka ng magiging, sa manlulupit, di ka pa sisigil, sa lalat at punto. Please uh, remain standing for a minute of prayer and meditation. Georgia leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we call the roll of members. Uh, do you have any objection? Tristan, the Secretary General has now called the roll of members. Roll call of members. Honorable Representatives Abalos, Abante, Abunda, Acharon, Asidre, Ako, Adyong, Advincula, Agarao, Alba, Albano, Almario, Almonte, Alonte, Alvarez Jose, Alvarez Mercedes, Alvarez Pantalion, Amante, Amatong, Ang, Angara, Aquino, Aquino Magsaysay, Arbison, Arenas, Arogancia, Asistio, Ataide, Omentado, Balindong, Barba, Barbers, Baronda, Barzaga, Basku, Bautista, Bautista Lim, Benitez, Bernos, Billones, Biron, Bolilia, Bondo, Bongalon, Bordado, Bosita, Briones, Brosas, Buhain, Bulut Begtang, Bustos, Cabredo, Cagas, Cahayon Uy, Calderon, Calixto, Campos, Kawagdan, Cardema, Cari, Castro Franz, Castro Jean, Celeste, Chan, Chato, Chua, Chungalaw, Co Angelica Natasha, Co Elizaldi, Co Pilar, Co Juanco Jaime, Co Juanco Mark, Colada, Coliantes, Corvera, Cruz Ambrosio, Cruz Ricardo, Cua, Quaresma, Dagoo, Dalipe, Dalog, Dayang Hiram, Daza, De Jesus, Divinesha, Defensor, Del Mar, De Los Santos, Dimaporo Muhammad Kali, Dimaporo City Amina, Dionisio, Domingo, Duavit, Duhali, Duterte, Di Faustino Ino, D. Faustino Michael, D. Ian Paul, Ecleo, Emano, Enverga, Escudero, Espares, Espina, Estrella, Yudela, Farinas, Fernandez, Ferrer Antonio, Ferrer Juliet Marie, Flores, Fortes, Frasco, Fresnedi, Puentebella, Galeos, Garcia Albert, Garcia Dante, Garcia Jose Arturo, Garcia Maria Angela, Garcia Pablo Jan, Garcia Vincent, Guardiola, Garin, Gasataya, Gato, Go Ed Christopher, Go Mark, Goles, 
Gomez, Gonzaga, Gonzales Aurelio, Gonzales Neptali, Gonzales Sandro, Coriseta, Guico, Gintu, Gullas, Gutierrez, Hagedorn, Jaresco, Hataman, Hernandez, Herrera, Horibata, Javier, Co Olga Ara, Co Ricardo, Co Wilton, Kunghun, Labad Labad, Lakson, Lakson Noel, Lagman, Lagon Daphne, Lagon Sani, Lara, Lazatin, Lee, Legarda, Libanan, Lim Kaichong, Loyola, Luistro, Lumayag, Makapagal Arroyo, Maseda, Madrona, Magsino, Malapitan, Mangawang, Manikiz, Manuel, Maranyon, Marcoleta, Marcos, Mariano Hernandez, Marino, Marquez, Martinez, Mastura, Matibag, Matugas, Mendoza, Mercado, Mercado Revilla, Miguel, Momo, Morden, Nava, Nisay, Noel, Nograles Juan Fidel, Nograles Margarita, Nolasco, Uaminal, Olaso, Olivares, Ongchuan, Ordanes, Ortega, Uano Dizon, Padernos, Paduano, Paglas, Palma, Panaligan, Pancho, Panotes, Pascual, Peña, Pimentel, Plaza, Plato, Primicia Sagabas, Umaren, Uno, Kimbo, Rama, Recto, Rihensha, Remulia, Revilla Brian, Revilla Ramonjolo, Reyes, Rilio, Rivera, Robes, Rodriguez Yulogio, Rodriguez Rufus, Roman, Romero, Romualdez Ferdinand Martin, Romualdez Yeda Marie, Romualdo, Romulo, Roque, Sakdalan, Sagarbaria, Sakaluran, Salceda, Sali, Salimbangon, Salo, Salvame, Santos, Saulug, Silverio, Singson Richel, Singson Ronald, Singson Mihan, Solon, Suan, Suansing Horacio, Suansing Micaela Angela, Suarez, Taliado, Tamayo, Tambunting, Tan Joseph, Tan Keith Micah, Tan Reynolds Michael, Tan Samir, Tan Stephen James, Tan Tambut, Tan Chai, Tan Watko, Tariela, Teodoro, Teves Arnolfo, Teves Jose, Tianco, Tieng, Tolentino, Tulfo Jocelyn, Tulfo Ralph Wendell, Tupas, Tutor, T, Umali, Unabia, Ungab, Valeriano, Valmayor, Vargas, Vargas Alfonso, Velasco, Veloso Tuazon, Vergara, Versosa, Villa, Villafuerte Luis Raymond, Villafuerte Miguel Luis, Villanueva, Villar, Villaraza Suarez, Villarica, Violago, Yamsuan, Yap Christiantel, Yap Christopherson, Yap Edvig, Yap Eric, U Divina Grace, U Jazel Victoria, Yulo, Zamora Amparo Maria, Zamora Maria Carmen, Zamora Isabel Maria, Zubiri. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, the roll call shows that 309 members responded to the call. With uh, 309 members responding uh, to the call, the chair declares the presence of the quorum. Majority Leader. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, with leave of the House, I move that we open the privilege hour. Is there any objection? Chair is done. Privilege hour is now, our, it's not, hour is now open. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move that we recognize the Honorable Jose Bong Tevez Jr. of Party List TGP for his privileged speech. Congressman Bong Tevez is now recognized. Mr. Speaker, 
I would like to discuss the ABACA situation in the country in relation to the move of the Banco Central ng Pilipinas to shift from using the traditional and long-standing Philippines banknotes made of 80% cotton and 20% fiber to polymer or plastic-made banknotes. Mr. Speaker, wag na po sanang tuluyang palitan ng ating Banko Sentral ang lahat ng currency notes ng Pilipinas to polymer o plastic materials. Ito po ay para maproteksyonan ang industriya ng abaka at ang mga magsasakan dito sa ating bansa dahil sila po ang unang apektado sa plano ng Banko Sentral na gumamit ng plastic sa ating salapi. Mr. Speaker, ilang beses na po akong in-interview sa dyaryo at radio patungkol sa isyo na ito at palagi ko pong sinasagot sa kanila ang aking panawagan sa Banko Sentral na itigil na ang kanilang planong pagpapalit ng materialis na ginagamit sa ating pera una pong nilabas ng ating Central Bank ang 10 million peraso ng 1,000 piso polymer bills noong April 2022. Ngayon, batay, batay sa Banko Sentral ng Pilipinas by June 2023 ay madadagdagan ang bilang ng 1,000 pesos polymer banknotes ng 490 million pieces para mabuo ang kanilang target na 500 pieces sa isang libong piso. In consideration sa ating bansa, sana po ay huli na po ito at ang mga susunod na gawin ay ang traditional na 80% cotton at 20% fiber ulit. Mr. Speaker, ang sabi po ng Banko Sentral ng Pilipinas, mas matibay po at mas magtatagal ang perang gawa sa polymer o plastic. Ngunit, kung niyo pong matatandaan, nung unang inilabas ang polymer banks notes, ay umani ito ng madaming reklamo sa publiko. Dahil sa mga ilimitasyon sa pag-handle nito, bawal daw po itong matupi, bawal daw po itong malukot o krampol. Hindi po pala ito kasing tibay ng traditional bank notes natin na gawa sa abaka at cotton. Bilang plastic, ito po ay hindi recyclables. At alam naman na po natin ang mga plastic ang dahilan ng pagbara sa mga kanal at sanhi ng pagbaha sa ating bansa. Tayo rin po ay may panawagan na ipagbawal ang single-use plastics para maiwasan na ang mga ito. Pangalawa, sabi din po nila ang polymer-based banknotes ay more sustainable and environmental friendly. Mr. Speaker, mas environmental friendly po ba ang bagay na gawa sa plastic kaysa sa cotton at abaka? I beg to disagree. Ako po ay naniniwala na mas environmental friendly ang mga materialis katulad ng cotton at abaka fiber. Dahil ito ay natural crops at hindi synthetic tulad ng polymers o plastic. Mr. Speaker, to put it in a content, ang Pilipinas po ay nagsusupply ng 87.5% ng abaca fiber demand sa buong mundo. Sunod po dito ang Ecuador at Costa Rica na may 12.5% na supply. Ibig sabihin nito, tayo po ang number one supplier ng abaca sa buong mundo. Ngayon, paano po natin may pagmamalaki na tayo ang number one producer ng abaka kung tayo mismo ay tatanggalin natin ang paggamit nito sa ating mga salapi. Ang ating produkto ay tinatangkilik sa buong mundo, ngunit sa ating bansa mismo ay aalisin natin ang paggamit nito sa ating mga salapi. Nakakalungkot pong isipin ang pangyayaring ito, Mr. Speaker. According to data from the Philippine Fiber Industry, Development Authority or PELPEDA, ang abaka industry ay mayroong kita 
ng 97.1 million US dollars kada taon mula sa pag-export at local demand. Katulad ng paggamit ng abaka fiber sa ating salapi, ang halaga pong ito ay maapiktuan at bababa kapag tuluyang hindi na gamitin ng Bangko Sentral ng Pilipinas ang fiber. Sa ating mga salapi, naghihirap na nga po ang mga magsasaka ng abaka sa ating basa lalo pa po nating babawasan ang kanilang kita sa pagtanggal ng abaka na ginagamit sa paggawa ng ating pera. Mrs. Speaker, I hail from the Abaca capital of the Philippines, the province of Catanduanes. According to Pelpeda, ang Catanduanes produce ng 100 metric tons of Abaca fiber every year and 30% of these are used to create our money sa raw materials. Aside from the substantial abaka producing Bicol region, mayroon pa pong higit 100,000 abaka farmers sa Kalaga region, Dabao region at iba pang lugar na lubang maapiktuhan sa pagpapalit ng traditional banknotes natin. Mr. Speaker, ang mga nasabing region po ay halos hindi pa tuluyan nakakabangon sa, pagpins sa pinsala na dinulot ng Super Typhoon Ruli noong 2020. Karamihan po sa kanilang mga sakahan ay bagsak at yung iba naman ay nakakasakit ang kanilang pananim kung kaya imbis na bawasan natin ang kanilang kita dahil sa pagpapalit sa tra ng traditional 80% cotton at 20% abaca fiber na salapin natin ng polymer Sana'y tulungan na lang natin makatayo ang industriya ng abaka sa ating bansa. Mas palakasin po natin ang industriyang ito. Dahil ito lang ang ating may pagmamalaki na tayo ang number one sa buong mundo. It has helped them by upgrading their facilities, introducing new research and technology to further intensify the production of our of quality in world-class abaca fiber, not only for the benefit of our country, but also the rest of the world. With this, Mr. Speaker, I would like the leadership of this August Chamber and my fellow congressman in allowing me to express the appeal of our abaca farmers and the negative impact to the abaca industry or the Banco Central ng Pilipinas shipped to polymer-based bank notes. Marami pong Salamat. Thank you, Congressman Bong Tevez. <clears throat> Thank you. Majority Leader. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I move that we refer the speech of the Honorable Jose Bong Tevez Jr. to the Committee on Rules for its appropriate action. The speech of Congressman Bong Tevez will refer to the Committee on Rules for uh, appropriate action. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, move to suspend the privilege hour for a few minutes. Sense is suspended. The privilege. Oh, the privilege hour is now suspended. Majority uh, Leader. Mr. Speaker, uh, may we recognize the guest of the Honorable uh, Congressman from Provinciano Party List, Alfred C. De Los Santos. Uh, they are Maria Eugenia de Los, de Los Angeles Retori, Head of the Preventing and Responding to WMD CBRN Tourism Unit, United Nations Counter Terrorism Center. Irma Makalinao, Professor, College of Medicine, University of the Philippines, Manila. Chief Superintendent Gil Gilbert D. Dolot, Director, Bureau of Fire Protection. Chief Superintendent Renato B. Marshall, Regional Director, Bureau of Fire Protection, Region 9, and Jose Segundo M. Bang, Jr., Commissioner, Philippine Racing Commission. To the guests of uh, Honorable Alfred C. De Los Santos, welcome to the House of Representatives. Palakbakan po natin yung mga guests ni Congressman De Los Santos. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move to resume the privilege hour. Uh, privilege hour is now resumed. Majority Leader. 
Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize the Honorable Paul Ruiz Daza of 1st District of Northern Samar to avail of the privilege art. The senior minority leader is now recognized, Congressman Paul Daza. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Majority Leader. Uh, good afternoon to my colleagues, mga minamahal ko pong mga kababayan. I would like to speak up on the arbitrary policies of board exams, which I believe, Mr. Speaker, is anti-student and anti-poor. And please allow me to explain. The development of human capital is a pillar of a thriving economy. Simply put, the robust growth of the economy, and this is a universal truth, significantly relies on a strong, highly skilled, deeply motivated, and inspired professionals. The talent of the Filipino is universally valued and sought after. The Philippines was able to come out on the other side of the COVID pandemic because of the skill and unwavering commitment of our doctors, nurses, and other professionals in the health sector. Our competent medical professionals went above and beyond the call of duty and allowed us to weather the storm. And this holds true in other sectors. Our teachers, engineers, and ICT professionals, just to name a few, all did their, pa their part in making the new normal significantly more manageable for the Filipino people. Despite their skill and commitment, Many lives were lost, our economy was shut down, our lives were literally put on hold. We could have done so much more. Recent data, Mr. Speaker, gathered from the PRC, shows the passing rate in 36 professions from 2017 to 2022 is only 40.8%. This is less than half of the number of examinees. Ibig sabihin po, higit sa kalahati po ng ating mga examinees ay bumabagsak. These numbers are worrisome. The basic education sector has a 31% passing rate for elementary education and 41% passing rate for secondary, for CPAs, a staggering low rate of 24% passing rate. Fisheries technologists, passing rate is 33%. How can an archipelagic nation with oceanic area larger, larger than the land area and only has one-third of aspirants passing the licensure exam? Kailangan po ba talaga ng dogmatic approach? Hindi po ba dapat mas practical at innovation-based an approach sa mga kursong katulad nito? Yes, of course, science is important, but courses like this, its application is most critical. For agriculturists, 36% passing rate. Panano po ang ating goal toward food security, which no less than our president, who also serves as the agriculture secretary, declared as a top priority. We need to understand what are the causes of these low passing rates. And not only that, we need to understand tama, pa bo, tama ba ang sistema ng pamalalakad ng ating licensure system. Is our licensure system is still appropriate for the call of our times? Mawalang galang po, but we have reports from various re reliable sources that the decision-making on the passing rates is too subjective, thus prone to arbitrariness, while also being devoid of any scientific and logical basis. This leads to situations where the professional regulatory boards typically come up with passing or cut-off scores based solely 
on the perception on the perceived reception of the general public rather than a, a well thought out system which puts a premium on individual skill and mastery of the profession this is a system where decision making it's centralized on one person and body is the global economy we must apply best practices which allow licensing of professionals even without an exam. For example, Mr. Speaker, for lawyers in Wisconsin, even though the bar exam is not under the PRC, but I want to include as an example. In Wisconsin, law graduate can practice law even without passing the bar. There's an alternative system which allows more inclusion. Oregon is also considering a similar path. In California, the CPA board exam wherein candidates are required to take a 14-hour computer-based test that may be taken during testing windows of the five days per week during two months of every quarter. In this system, candidates can take any section of any exam in any testing window and in any order they wish. However, candidates may not take any single section twice in the same testing window. Once a candidate passes a section in an 18-month rolling time frame basis, the other remaining section can be completed within 18 months. To make a long story short, Mr. Speaker, it may be time for the House and as a matter of public policy to think of more inclusive ways to allow our students to be able to be licensed as professionals. These are just two examples that indeed there's a growing trend toward allowing more inclusion in the professional licensing system. In the Philippines, we can consider such alternatives fully well the situation of our Filipino graduates. Pahirapan na nga pagtatapos sa elementary at high school, pati na ang pagtapos sa college, abay pagdating sa board exam, kahit nagkabaon-baon na sa utang ang pamilya para lang may pang-review center sila, ay kailangan pa lumusot sa isang pangbutas na karayom ang ating mga graduates. Is this correct? Many of these graduates are from poor, disadvantaged groups, and it's truly disheartening they could not pursue their much-sought profession because they could not pass a very subjective board exam. Is it worth considering an apprenticeship program under a licensed professional for, say, three years and automatically qualify them for a license given a set of requirements. This will encourage region, regional human capital development and grow the professional workforce base. Esteemed colleagues, I, ho I hope this matter will merit our urgent attention. We need more professionals in our nation building. More importantly, Everyone deserves a chance to a better life. If, if education is indeed the great equalizer, I hope we take it upon ourselves to ensure that this will truly be so. To quote an esteemed American educator, there is indeed great injustice in telling our youth that education is the key, while the supposed educator continue to change the locks. It is my sincere hope that the privileged speech would be, would be but the first step in unlocking a more enlightened, inclusive path for graduates and professionals. Thank you for giving me the time, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, uh, Senior uh, Minority Leader uh, Paul Daza. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, um, I would like, I move that, I would like to, um, Recognize the Honorable Janet Garin for her interpolation.
Congresswoman Janet Green, for your interpellation. You are now recognized. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. If our distinguished colleague, the Honorable Senior Deputy Minority Leader, Paul Dasa, is willing to yield to a few questions. Yes, my honor, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, distinguished colleagues, nagulat ako sa mga isiniwalat ni Congressman Paul Dasa. And I would like to laud him as one of the distinguished public servants whose very core adrenaline of his heart is anchored on the welfare of his constituents. May, may I therefore ask him what in his opinion are the determinants in, in the percentage and the passing percentage of every board exam given by our distinguished board of examiners? Uh, Mr. Speaker, I, I appreciate the interpolation of the Deputy Majority Leader Garin. And in fact, that is the crux of my issue with the various professional uh, board of examinees. There seems to be arbitrary, uh, it seems to be arbitrary. Just this morning, I asked the PRC and the uh, professional uh, board exam of, the, uh, of medicine that same question. And I couldn't get a straight answer. What is the basis for the passing rates? And those are the questions I think that PRC should answer and the various professional uh, regulatory boards. My main concern, Mr. Speaker, is there are thousands of students. Hirap na hirap po mag-graduate lang sa college. O utang para lang maka-review. Pupunta pa sa Manila o sa Cebu. And then, there are board exams like the CPA board. 80% will fail and only 20% will pass. Bakit po ganon? So, I, I have the same concerns and those are the questions that PRC and the regulatory bodies must answer to us. Is it good policy to fail more than we pass? Uh, examinees. So, I appreciate the question and that's exactly what I want to ask the various regulatory boards, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, distinguished colleagues, earlier I heard the word subjective. Ang ibig po ba sabihin nito e tila nakasalalay sa kamay ng iilang mga tao ang pagpasa or sabihin na natin ang future profession ng ating mga kababayan. Is this what our honorable colleague is referring to? Tama po yun. At yun po ang impression ko at marami mga magulang at mga kabataan. Nakasalalang lang po sa isang tao o sa isang uh, association or board. At yan po ang dapat paliwanag nila. Mr. Speaker, distinguished colleagues, Isa-isahin po natin. I, I, I heard earlier that um, the, Honorable, well, the Honorable Paul Daza gave figures. Um, do, did, did you mention the bar exams? Uh, hindi ko po nabanggit, but Mr. Speaker, the bar exam uh, historically has ranged more or less from 20 to 40 percent passing rate. There's been some years na mas mataas, like during the pandemic, uh, and I'm glad you mentioned that. If you'll allow me... Uh, uh, Honorable Garin, in fact, uh, I found out that when it comes to the bar exam, which is under the Supreme Court, now there's really no scientific or research-based uh, rationale on the passing rate. Nag-uusap-usap lang po sa Supreme Court na pakunyari ang passing rate ilagay sa 70, 75%. Ilan ang papasa? Sobrang baba. Magagalit ang publiko. O, babaan natin para mas maraming pumasa. Tapos bigla na lang, o sige, uh, that's the passing rate. So, meaning, it supports a contention that it's not science-based. And it's just really kung ano po gusto ng decision makers. And I think inherently and fundamentally, that is unfair to our students. So, Mr. Speaker, distinguished colleagues, Isa-isahin po natin yung na-mention nyo na mga board exams. 
Um, you, you mentioned the board exam for certificate, certified public accountants. Uh, yes. Uh, sa CPA po, historically, the average is 24% passing rate. So CPA board exams, 24%. Ano po ba ang na-mention yun? Nursing? Uh, basic education uh, for elementary, for uh, graduates who want to be elementary teachers, it's 31%. For secondary, it's 41%. Fisheries technologist is 33%. At agriculture is po, uh, supposed to be one of the highest priority. The passing rate for agriculture is 36%. Yeah, Mr. Speaker, you mentioned um, nursing board exams? Uh, ang nursing po, I, I did not mention, but my recollection is it's about 40%. Even though we have a big demand for nurses, mas marami po ang bumabagsak kesa sa pumapasa. For the medical board, Mr. Speaker? Uh, the medical board is uh, historically around 40 to 50 percent in the last few years. So, ibig po sabihin, Mr. Speaker, distinguished colleagues, tila hindi lang sa iisang profesyon na bumababa yung mga pumapasa, but it's technically spread on all professions. Many professions, Mr. Speaker, that's correct. Yeah, in other words, Mr. Speaker, distinguished colleagues, siguro napapanahon na na tingnan ito. We need to look at the bottom of all this because if it is only referring to, let's say, there was a time, a point in time that the board of, uh, the nursing board had a passing percentage of 40% as compared to the historical data of 70%, natuntun ang problema dun sa nag-mushroom na nursing schools wherein it was online and there was no actual uh, monitoring of the standards. However, the current situation that the Honorable Paul Daza is conveying to us is spread across all professions. The probability, therefore, of a glitch either in the ruling or in the way the exams are being conducted or the questionnaires are being made is highly possible. Is that what the Honorable Dasa is telling us, Mr. Speaker? Yes, uh, Mr. Speaker, and, and I appreciate the Honorable Garin articulating that. At ang nakakalungkot dito, Mr. Speaker, distinguished colleagues, tila hindi ramdam ng iba, pero kung hindi natin ito pakikinggan at hindi natin bibigyang tuon ng pansin, maraming buhay at maraming pamilya will continuously suffer because as what our honorable colleague, Mr. Speaker, has mentioned, ang pamilyang Pilipino ay nagsasangla para lang mapaaral yung isang anak. Ang pamilyang Pilipino ay nagbibigay ng malaking value sa edukasyon at parte yan ng dignidad ng pamilya. Subalit, kung hindi natin matitingnan, bakit nga ba nagkakaganito? That even in the medical boards, where the passing percentage usually ranges from 70 to 80 percent, or even 70 percent, now it's down to 40 percent. In other words, Mr. Speaker, distinguished colleagues, tama po ba ang aking pag pagkaintindi that the Honorable Paul Dasa is telling us that this is a wake-up call because the basic wealth of our country, which is our human resource, is starting to be eaten by a system that we are not seeing the causes. Yan po ba ang ating narinig? Uh, yes, Mr. Speaker, and I'm grateful that the uh, Honorable Garin uh, shares the same sentiment, and I'm hoping that my colleagues here today uh, listen to some of this information and will join me in looking into and maybe even investigating how these passing rates are set by the board, why are we failing so many students? Uh, it is inequitable, it is unfair, and I don't think it's good public policy to do that. Mr. Speaker, distinguished colleagues, do I get it right that one of the core of our honorable colleague's speech is the absence of a balance? While we do respect the board of examiners, there should also be a balance na kapag 
masyadong konti or the passing percentage is far from historical data, ibig sabihin kung dati-rati is 70 to 80 percent ang pumapasa, ngayon biglang naging 40 percent. Or for the accountants, it was usually 40 percent, ngayon nasa 20 percent. Ang ibig ba sabihin nito, eh hindi po ba dapat there's a balancing act? Because human as they are, probably the questionnaires or the system by which these exams are being made could have probably created something that is not already attuned to the call of times. Uh, yes, Mr. Speaker. In fact, my, that's exactly my contention that when setting the passing standards, public policy, the supply demand of the industry, the requirements of the sectors should be included and considered when this board exams are administered. And those are the questions that I want to ask the Physicians Board, the Accountancy Board, uh, the Education Board, how they do this balance. And that is subject to legislation. That is our absolute right of oversight. And those are the questions we should be asking them. And I agree with the Honorable Garin that it is a balancing uh, situation. In other words, Mr. Speaker, distinguished colleagues, what the Supreme Court is doing, na kung sakaling kunyari sa bar, ang pumasa ay 18% lang or 15%, they do the balancing act of averaging so that our professionals will not have a vacuum. Ganito po ba ang nakikitang problema or the missing ingredient that is present in the bar exams but is absent in the other professional regulatory bodies. Th th those are some of the factors, Mr. Speaker. In fact, in my speech, I referred to more inclusive licensing. I want the House, PRC, and the other bodies to consider other ways of getting a license. In, in the United States, there, there is at least one state that allows law graduates to get the license to practice by apprenticeship. In Australia, from what I was told, in fact, if you graduate from an accredited medical school, in fact, in Australia, which is a very high standard uh, of the practice of medicine, there's no board exam from what I was initially told. In India, Students who want to become doctors go to school for only four and a half years and the passing rate applied to their exam is 50% because they have a need for doctors. Those are the discussions that should take place in the house and come up with maybe alternative systems of licensing uh, sectors, especially sectors that need more professionals. And also, my other point, Mr. Speaker, is there are many mga probinsyano po, galing sa probinsya, para lang mag-aral, pupunta sa Manila, pupunta sa Cebu, para lang maka-review, pupunta sa Manila, uutang po ng 100,000 pesos, para lang maka-review. I think there's an inequity, there's an injustice when the exams favor seems to favor, and those are the questions I want to ask, the private schools, yung mga mas mayayaman po na mga pamilya, mas, por, ma, mas mataas po yung passing rate. So what are we doing to address the needs of those students who come from the lower income, from the provinces? Binabagsak lang po sila. At I think a society that does that is somewhat inhumane. We need to have kinder regulatory boards. We need to pass more of the students, Mr. Speaker. And we need to find alternative and more inclusive ways of doing that. So, Mr. Speaker, distinguished colleagues, I, I, I again, I appreciate this very eye-opening speech of the Honorable Paul Dasa. Ang Pilipinas po, ang Pilipino, Fortunate that we are, we are intellectually more capable than other races. Filipinos can multitask. 
Filipinos are a resilient people, and we have been known globally in every part of this world, the Filipinos' presence can always be felt. That is our basic and greatest wealth, our people. And if we are not going to listen to the opening ears and opening, uh, eye-opening matter that the Honorable Paul Dasa has conveyed to all of us, then we lose the very essence of our wealth. Kaya nga, Mr. Speaker, distinguished colleagues, with the indulgence of everybody, I do hope na mabigyan ito ng tuon, mabigyan ng pansin, and that the Professional Regulation Commission can look into why this is happening. Because failing a board exam is a big emotional, mental, and financial stress to a family. While we do respect that standards should be maintained, the trend that is happening points to a possible lapse in the way these exams are being conducted. It's not just maintaining the standards, but this is already depleting our professionals. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, distinguished colleagues. And my congratulations to our very articulate but soft-hearted senior deputy minority leader. Thank you, Congressman Janet Green. Majority leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize Congressman Franz Castro of the AXPA Teachers Party List. Congresswoman Franz, you are recognized. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, and thank you, Majority Leader. Same with Representative um, Janet Garin. I also commend our distinguished colleague, Representative, uh, our SDML, Representative Paul Daza, for that very uh, revealing and very eye-opening um, speech about our uh, about the performance of our professionals in the licensure examination. And you know, Mr. Speaker, distinguished sponsor, madalas, uh, Mr. Speaker, naririnig natin sa mga comments, like for example, the examination of teachers, lic licensure examination of teachers. So, based on the data of our colleague, Representative uh, uh, Paul Daza, in basic education, we have 31%. In secondary education, 41%. Um, kung titignan natin, uh, Mr. Speaker, distinguished sponsor, um, kung Kung pagbabasihan natin ang standard of 75% rate of passing. So that this is way, way below of that, ano no, yung passing rate kung pagbabatayan natin yung standard na 75%. At madalas sinasabi nga, bakit ang konti ng mga teachers na pumapasa dito sa licensure examination? Ito ba ay uh, reflection ng mga high, higher institutions na pinanggagalingan nung ating mga uh, nung ating mga uh, incoming teachers dahil dito nga no pumapasa. So may ask the distinguished um, speaker, uh, uh, distinguished colleague Mr. Speaker about what what do we that what do do you think would be the possible reasons why yung mga teachers halimbawa ay, uh, uma, ay may ganito lang na mga mga passing uh, yung rate uh, Mr. Speaker uh, yung po talaga you I, I I'm glad that the honorable Castro uh, highlighted the plight of uh, the education graduates and the students who we want to become teachers eh, yun din nga po tinatanong ko bakit ang baba ng passing rate 31%. Ano po talaga ang basis niyan? Um, baka lang gusto nila talagang konti lang ang pumasa dahil ang mga nakaupo sa PRC o sa Education Regulatory Board, talagang gusto nilang babaan yung passing rate. Is there a science-based uh, research that they're using 
to, to set the cutoff. So, yun po, yun po ang talagang issue ko na ito pong mga board exams is anti-student and anti-poor. And in fact, my contention, arbitrary. At that's the whole point of my privilege speech and we need to take a look into that and probably revamp uh, the various laws, regulations that's making it very hard for students to pass these board exams. At sigurado po, Honorable Castro, wag po natin ituturo. Hindi po yan kasalanan ng student. Kasalanan po yan siguro ng CHED, PRC, or maybe our society in general. At we need to find solutions. Yes. Uh, thank you po, ano, kasi ganyan din po yung aking, ano, no, um, yung aking uh, conclusion na hindi lang yung basic education o yung courses, courses ng education talagang bumabagsak ano, yung ma or mababa yung passing rate or yung passing um, percentage ng mga gumagraduate at pumapasa. Pati pala dun sa iba't ibang mga profession, hindi rin siya nakakaakyat dun sa at least man lang yung 50%. So there is something wrong, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, distinguished um, minority li uh, senior, uh, senior minor senior minority leader, senior deputy minority leader, na there is something wrong talaga doon sa yung mga test na dapat na tinitignan natin. Ano? Yung ano ba yung klase ng test? Kasi alam nyo po, kapag gumagawa po tayo ng test at nagta-target tayo, Ano lang yung percentage ng ipapasa? So, for example, we will just pass, like for example, 20% nung upper, percent, upper percentile or lower percentile. May mga ganong pagta-target. Kaya yun ay dapat nating malaman sa PRC kung paano nila tinatarget yung passing rate. So, another question, Mr. Chair. So, do you think that the, it is not only no, yung PRC, yung CHED, yung mga higher institution, yung parang merong uh, kasalanan or whatever dito. Kailangan ba rin nating tignan yung basic education system? Okay? Kasi sinasabi natin, nagiging ano na to eh, nagiging domino effect na yan. Kung yung kalidad ng edukasyon natin from the basic education up to the higher education system ay uh, tingin natin ay mababa din yung kalidad. That would reflect then doon sa uh, whatever examination that the students would would take. Diba? I, I, uh, Mr. I, Speaker? I think the Honorable Castro is correct na may problema din sa basic education. And I'm sure pag tinignan po natin, in all levels may problema. But dahil Kung ano po yung mga problema na yun, ang bottom line po is nabibiktima yung mga students natin. At yan po yung dapat pag-aralan kung paano natin matutulungan yung mga examinees, how to increase the passing rates and, and create more professionals. At uh, I, I hope that Honorable Castro will join me uh, when this speech is uh, calendared for a committee hearing. At tulungan po ninyo ako mahanap kung saan talaga yung mga problema natin. Okay. So last question, Mr. Speaker, are you go, um, Mr. Speaker, are you going to file a resolution, or there is already a filed resolution uh, on this? Episode? I'm hoping, Mr. Speaker, that my privileged speech today and the interpolation uh, will be referred to the right uh, to the committee on rules and eventually be referred uh, to the right committee, which I think is the committee on professional regulation and commission. Okay. So, um, I, I will, uh, Mr. Speaker, I will support the resolution or whatever um, measures that would be filed or that would be um, put into action by Committee on Rules as regards to this. Uh, thank you very much, uh, distinguished um, speaker. Thank you, Congresswoman Franz. Thank you. Uh, Majority thank Leader. You. Mr. Speaker, I move 
that we refer the speech of the Honorable Paul Daza and its interpellations to the Committee on Rules for its appropriate action. The privileged speech of Congressman Paul Daza and other interpellators uh, be referred to the Committee on Rules for appropriate action. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we terminate the privilege hour. We have to terminate the privilege hour. Is there any objection? Here is none. Motion is approved. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, considering that copies of Journal Number 63, dated March 13, 2023, were already distributed to the members, I move that we dispense with the reading of the same and approve said journal. Is there any objection? The said journal is now approved. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we acknowledge the guests of the Honorable Robert Ace Barbers, the different Barangay Captains from the Municipality of Alegria, Surigao del Norte, namely Honorable Teotimo O. Bagakay, Honorable Alexander Micompal, Honorable Felix Pakipan, Honorable Carmelito Eliare, Honorable Rafael Salvacion, Honorable Herbert Antiola, Honorable Joji Salgarino, Honorable Robert Rafael, and Honorable Marvin of Kiriai. To the guests so of Congressman Ace Barbers, welcome to the House of the of Representative. Thank you, Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we now proceed with the reference of business and request that the Secretary General be directed to read the titles of bills and resolutions on first reading as well as communications and commu community committee reports. So moved, Mr. Speaker. Is there any objection? There is none. Motion is approved. The Secretary General is now directed to read the title of the bills uh, and resolution on first reading uh, as well as communication uh, and reports for a referral for the appropriate committee. Reference of business, bills on first reading. House Bill 7686, amending the Department of In of the Interior and Local Government Act of 1990 to include other baccalaureate degrees to the lateral entry program for line and technical officers. By Representatives Duterte, Yap Eric, and Yap Edvik. To the Committee on Public Order and Safety. House Bill 7687, establishing a Cancer Medicine and Treatment Assistance Fund for indigent and underprivileged Filipinos. By Representatives Duterte, Yap Eric, and Yap Edvik. To the Committee on Health. House Bill 7689, prohibiting online gambling. By Representative Cruz, Ricardo. The Committee on Games and Amusement. House Bill 7690, providing for the creation of centers for the elderly in every city or municipality, especially for the service of the elderly. By Representative Cruz, Ricardo. To the Special Committee on Senior Citizens. House Bill 7691, creating the Emergency Response Department. By Representative Cruz, Ricardo. To the Committee on Government Reorganization and the Committee on Disaster Resilience. House Bill 7692, Establishing the National Health Passport System and strengthening the primary health care system. By Representative Cruz Ricardo. To the Committee on Health. House Bill 7693. Strengthening our primary health care system. By Representative Cruz Ricardo. To the Committee on Local Government. House Bill 7694. Establishing the Microenterprise Recovery as a catalyst for healing and national transformation loan program. By Representative Cruz Ricardo. To the Committee on Micro, Small, and Medium Enterprise Development. House Bill 7695, institutionalizing the use of mobile application para sa Pilipino, otherwise known as mobile APP, in the delivery of basic government services and programs. By Representative Cruz Ricardo. The Committee on Information and Communications Technology. House Bill 7696, institutionalizing a national values, etiquette, and moral uprightness program, a commission on Filipino values, and an interfaith presidential council, instituting a faith-based and values-oriented leadership. By Representative Cruz Ricardo. The Committee of Basic Education and Culture. House Bill 7697, institutionalizing microfinance programs and access to capital support and grow microenterprises. By Representative Cruz Ricardo. The Committee on Micro, Small, and Medium Enterprise Development. House Bill 7698, providing 10,000 cash assistance to all Filipino families to help them cope with the effects of the current coronavirus pandemic and the increasing prices of goods and services. By Representative Cruz Ricardo. To the Committee on Social Services. House Bill 7699, providing for the Bill of Rights and Obligations of Taxpayers 
creating the Office of the National Taxpayer Advocate. By Representative Enverga. To the Committee Ways and Means. House Bill 7700, creating the National Nutrition Commission. By Representatives Mercado Revilla, Revilla Bryan, and Revilla Ramon Jolo. To the Committee on Health. House Bill 7701, providing for a National Defense Act to foster the suppression of insurgency and other serious threats to national security. By Representative Gomez. The Committee on National Defense and Security. House Bill 7702, establishing the Ormoc Test Center. By Representative Gomez. To the Committee on Higher and Technical Education. House Bill 7703, granting ATU Broadcast Advertising Corporation a franchise to construct, install, establish, operate, and maintain radio and television broadcasting stations in the Philippines. By Representative Dayang Hirang. To the Committee on Legislative Franchises. House Bill 7704, establishing a multi-species marine hatchery in Moalboal, Cebu, by Representative Calderon. To the Committee on Aquaculture and Fisheries Resources. House Bill 7705, promoting a low-carbon economy, establishing for this purpose an emission trading system and implementation mechanism to achieve national climate targets, by Representative Chato. To the Committee on Climate Change. House Bill 7706, strengthening the right of government to expropriate lands for socialized housing. By Representatives Tulfo, Ralph Wendell, and Tulfo, Jocelyn. To the Committee on Housing and Urban Development. House Bill 7707, establishing the Zambales Bahay Kalinga for sexually abused and exploited children. By Representatives Manikis and Kong Hoon. Committee on Welfare Children. House Bill 7708, establishing a forensic DNA database in the Philippines. By Representatives Tevez Jose. Committee on Public Order and Safety. House Bill 7709, Amending Presidential Decree 194, authorizing aliens as well as associations, corporations, or partnerships owned in wool or in part by foreigners to engage in the rice and corn industry. By Representative Rodriguez Rufus. The Committee on Agriculture and Food. House Bill 7710, providing for a moratorium on the payment of student loans during disasters and under emergencies. By Representative Rodriguez Rufus. The Committee on Higher and Technical Education and the Committee on Disaster Resilience. House Bill 7711, providing post-harvest facilities for palay and rice farmers. By Representatives Duterte, Yap Eric, and Yap Edvig. The Committee on Agriculture and Food. House Bill Number 7712 to 7716, converting certain avenues and roads in the lone legislative district of the City of General Santos into national roads. By Representative Acharon. The Committee on Public Works and Highways. House Bill 7717. Reorganizing the National Council on Disability Affairs into the National Commission on Disability Affairs by Representative Garcia Dante. Special Committee on Persons with Disabilities. House Bill 7719, establishing a multi-species marine hatchery in Moalbol, Cebu by Representative Calderon. To the Committee on Aquaculture and Fisheries Resources. House Bill 7720, institutionalizing the grant of teaching supplies allowance for public school teachers by Representative Tan Kit Maika. Committee on Basic Education and Culture. House Bill 7722, prohibiting the distribution, sale, and use of paraquat in the Philippines by Representatives Bro Brosas, Castro France, and Manuel. To the Committee on Agriculture and Food. House Bill 7723, prohibiting the sale and use of glyphosate in the, in the Philippines by Representatives Brosas, Castro France, and Manuel. To the Committee on Agriculture and Food. House Bill 7724, institution institutionalizing the Abot Alam project of the DepEd by Representative De Los Santos. To the, committee, to the Committee on Basic Education and Food. House Bill 7725, enhancing the patient's rights to medical expense, transparency, and preventing unexpected medical bills. By Representative De Los Santos. To the Committee on Health. House Bill 7726, establishing regional branches of specialty hospitals. By Representative De Los Santos. To the Committee on Health. House Bill 7727, expanding the scope of medical practice through providing guidelines for telemedicine services. By Representative De Los Santos. The Committee on Civil Service and Professional Regulation. House Bill 7729, establishing a Philippine Science High School campus in the city of General Santos. By Representative Acharon. The Committee on Science and Technology. House Bills number, number 7730 to 7733, converting certain roads in the lone legislative district of the city of General Santos into national roads. By Representative Acharon. Committee on Public Works and Highways. House Bill 7734, acquiring the inclusion of road safety education program in the K-12 curriculum by Representative Villalago. To the Committee on Basic Education and Culture. House Bill 7735, establishing the Young Farmers Challenge Program, creating for the purpose the Young Farmers Challenge Council by Representative Villalago. To the Committee on Agriculture and Food. House Bill 7736, 
promoting corporate farming and providing incentives therefore by representative Violago Committee of Agriculture and Food House Bill 7737 providing all barangay officials including barangay tanods members of the Lupon ng Tagapamayapa and barangay daycare workers a lump sum retirement pay equivalent to one year honorarium by representative Violago to the committee on local government House Bill 7738 promoting the increasing annual sales targets on electric hybrid and alternative fuel vehicles and providing incentives therefore thus achieving 100% EV sales by the year 2040 by representative Violago to the committee on energy House Bill 7739 modernizing the PVOX by representative Violago the committee on science and technology House Bill 7740 providing travel tax discount to senior citizens and PWDs by representative Violago to the committee on tourism House Bill 7741 Further promoting entrepreneurship by strengthening, empowering, and enhancing the financing and other support programs for micro, small, and medium enterprises by Representative Yolago. To the Committee on Micro, Small, and Medium Enterprise Development. House Bill 7742, strengthening further the electric power industry, amending for the purpose of the Electric Power Industry Reform Act of 2001 by Representative Colada. To the Committee on Energy. House Bill 7743, exempting critical products, essential goods, inputs, raw materials, and equipment from taxes, duties, and other fees during public health emergencies. By Representative Kuwanko Jaime. To the Committee Ways and Means. House Bill 7745, creating three ad additional branches of the Regional Trial Court in the 4th Judicial Region to be stationed in General Trias Cavite. By Representative Ferrer Antonio. To the Committee on Justice. House Bill 7746, establishing the General Trias Test Training and Assessment Center in General Trias Cavite. By Representative Ferrer Antonio. The Committee on Higher and Technical Education. House Bill 7747, dividing and creating new barangays in General Trias Cavite. By Representative Ferrer Antonio. Committee on Local Government. House Bill 7748, institutionalizing the position of Economic and Investment Promotion Officer in LGUs. By Representative Ferrer Antonio. Committee on Local Government. House Bill 7749, to reform the budget process by enforcing greater accountability in public financial management, promoting fiscal sustainability, upholding Congress power of the purse, instituting an integrated PFM system, and increasing budget transparency and participation. By Representative Ungap. To the Committee on Appropriations. House Bill 7750, allowing the President to declare the adoption of daylight saving time in the public and private sectors. By Representative Olivares. To the Committee on Economic Affairs. House Bill 7753, providing for bicycle rights, creation of local bikeway, bike, bikeways office, establishing infrastructure in relation thereto. By Representative Rama. To the Committee on Transportation and the Committee on Sustainable Development Goals. Resolutions. House Resolution number 885, urging the House Committee on Human Rights to conduct an urgent inquiry on the encampment of the Philippine Army's 11th Infantry Battalion in Happy Land and Aroma in Barangay 105, Tondo, Manila, and their continuing harassment and intimidation of local women's rights advocates and community leaders, and recommend the immediate pullout of troops from the community. By Representatives Brosas, Castro France, and Manuel. To the Committee on Rules. House Resolution 886, congratulating and commending the Pintakasi, a youth organization from Alabat, Quezon, for being one of the recipients of the 2010 Accomplished Youth Organizations Awards for its invaluable, invaluable contributions to nation building. By Representative Dan Keith Micah. The Committee on Youth and Sports Development. House Resolution 887, creating an ad hoc committee to conduct an inquiry into the land dispute between the Central Mindanao University and the Manobo Talandig Indigenous Cultural Community in the province of Bukidnon. By Representative Mangawang. The Committee on Rules. House Resolution 888, urging the Regional Tripartite Wages and Productivity Board of the DOLE to review and revise in order to increase the daily minimum wage rates per wage order in the Calabarzon region. By Representatives Revilla, Ramon Jolo, Mercado Revilla, Revilla Bryan, Remulia, Amante, Buhain, Matibag, Gargiola, Fernandez, Alonte, Mariano Hernandez, Reyes, Loyola, Garcia Jose Arturo, Tolentino, Agarao, Arogancia, Tanhuatco, Tan, Keith Maica, Duavit, Hernandez, Acop, Luistro, Advincula, Briones, Bolivia, Colliantes, Ferrer Antonio, and Barzaga. To the Committee on Labor and Employment. House Resolution 889, Resolution Congratulating and Commending Filipino Jiu-Jitsu Athletes Margarita Megi Ochoa, Jenakaila Napolis, Annie Ramirez and Dylan Cristil Rain Valmores for winning gold medals, and Mark Alexander Lim and Andrea Lois Lau for winning bronze medals in the 7th Jiu-Jitsu Asian Championship, held at the Rangsit University Stadium in Bangkok, Thailand from February 24 to 28, 2023. 
Their representatives from Waldes, Ferdinand Martin, Dalipe, Libanan, Marcos, from Waldes, Yada Marie, and Arcidre. To the Committee on Rules. House Resolution 890. Resolution expressing the profound condolences of the House of Representatives to the family of Bishop Emeritus Angel Tech I. Hobayan, DD, of the Diocese of Katarman, Province of Northern Samar. Their representatives, Romualdez, Ferdinand Martin, Dalipe, Libanan, Marcos Romualdez, Yeda Marie, and Asidre. With the Committee on Rules. Communications. Letter dated July 28, 2022 of the BIR Commissioner, forwarding to the House of Representatives certain financial accountability reports as of June 30, 2022. To the Committee of Appropriations. Letter dated August 3, 2022 of the Office of the Presidential Advisor on Peace, Reconciliation, and Unity Secretary, informing the House that OPA PRU's financial report for the month of July 2022 was submitted to the Unified Reporting System and posted on their official website. To the Committee on Appropriations. Letter dated August 4, 2022 of the DPWH Regional Director, Regional Office 8, submitting to the House a copy of their monthly status report as of June 30, 2022, of all ongoing projects implemented in the 1st District of Leyte. To the Committee on Appropriations. Letter dated August 18, 2022, of the SSS President and Chief Executive Officer, submitting to the House a copy of the report on the 2021 SSS Consolidated Investments. To the Committee on Government Enterprises and Privatization. Letter dated August 19, 2022, of the COA OIC Audit Team Leader, Audit Team Number R9-01, State universities and colleges and other standalone agencies furnishing the House with a copy of their annual audit report on the Western Mindanao State University for the year ending December 31, 2021. The Committee on Public Accounts. Letters from the NEDA Secretary, Director of the DOST Industrial Technology Development Institute, DND Assistant Secretary for Financial Management, and the Director for Con Controllership of the PNP National Headquarters, furnishing the House with copies of their agency action plan and status of implementation on the COAS audit observations and recommendations for the calendar year 2021. The Committee on Public Accounts. Letters from, the, from local chief executives and government officials transmitting to the House copies of reports on fund utilization and status of program project activity implementation relative to the local government support fund and Bayanihan grant to city, municipality, and province. To the Committee on Appropriations. Letter dated August 22, 2022, of the DPWH Undersecretary for Planning and Public Private Partnership Services, furnishing the House with copies of certain PPP projects as of July 25, 2022. To the Committee on Public Works and Highways. Letter dated September 1, 2022, of the Mactan Cebu International Airport Authority, General Manager and CEO, submitting to the House a copy of their 2021 annual report. To the Committee on Transportation. Letter dated September 5, 2022 of the DOTR Undersecretary for Administration and Finance, transmitting to the House a copy of the Report on Appropriations, Obligations, and Disbursements as of July 31, 2022. To the Committee on Appropriations. Letter dated October 10, 2022 of the CHED Chairman, informing the House on the National Expenditure Program for Fiscal Year 2023 of the CHED. To the Committee on Appropriations. Letters dated October 20 and 27, 2022 of the DOST Director of Advanced Science and Technology Institute, submitting to the House copies of certain reports as of September 30, 2022. To the Committee on Appropriations. Letter dated November 3, 2022 of the National Irrigation Administration Regional Manager, submitting to the House a copy of the status of infra procurement implementation as of October 15, 2022 in the 1st District of Leyte. To the Committee on Appropriations. Letter dated November 24, 2022 of the PLLO Secretary, Presidential Advisor and Legislative Affairs and Head, submitting to the House certain financial accomplishment reports. To the Committee on Appropriations. Letter dated February 6, 2023 of the Intramuros Administration Administrator, submitting to the House copies of certain financial accountability reports for the quarter ending December 31, 2022. To the Committee on Appropriations. Letter dated February 9, 2023 of the BIR Commissioner, forwarding to the House certain, certain financial accountability reports as of December 31, 2022. To the Committee on Appropriations. DOST Secretary's 2016-2022 End of Term Report. To the Committee on Science and Technology. Manila International Airport Authority Annual Report 2021. To the Committee on Transportation. Energy Regulatory Commission 2021 Annual Report. To the Committee on Energy. DTI Annual Report 2021. To the Committee on Trade and Industry. 
UPLB Accomplishment Report on Key Initiatives 2017-2020 and the Chancellor's Report on UPLB's Accomplishments November 2014 October to October 2020. The Committee on Higher and Technical Education. Committee Reports. Committee Report Numbers 474 and 475. Submitted by the Committee on Higher and Technical Education and the Committee on Appropriations on House Bill Number 7755 and 7756, respectively. To the Committee on Rules. Additional reference of business. Please proceed, thus. Additional reference of business. Bills on first reading. House Bill 7757, providing for the regulation of organization and operation of community microfinance groups, also known as Paluwagan, by Representatives Lacson and Marcoleta. To the Committee on Micro, Small, and Medium Enterprises Development. House Bill Number 7758, granting menstrual leave of a maximum of two days per month with 100% daily remuneration to all female employees in the private and public sectors by Representative Brosas. To the Committee on Labor and Employment and the Committee on Civil Service and Professional Regulation. Resolutions. House Resolution 891, urging the House of Representatives through the Committee on Agriculture and Food to immediately conduct an investigation on the alleged state-sponsored smuggling of sugar by Representatives Brosas, Castro France, and Manuel. To the Committee on Rules. House Resolution 892, commending and congratulating Filipino Olympic boxer Charlie Coronel Suarez for his technical knockout of previously undefeated Australian champion Paul Fleming in a bout held in New South Wales, Australia on March 15, 2023. By representatives Mercado Revilla, Revilla Bryan, and Revilla Ramon Jolo. To the Committee on Youth and Sports Development. House Resolution 893, urging the House through the Committee on Human Rights to immediately conduct an investigation on the harassment and intimidation against Gabriela Women's Party Marikina President Elizabeth Mainigo, perpetrated by alleged agents from the Office of the Presidential Advisor on the Peace Process. By representatives Brosas, Castro France, and Manuel. To the Committee on Rules. Messages from the Senate. Message dated March 21, 2023, informing the House of Representatives that on even date, the Senate designated Senators Strada, De La Rosa, Go, Marcos, Tolentino, and Pimentel as confer conferees to the Bicameral Conference Committee on the disagreeing provisions of Senate Bill No. 1849 and House Bill 6517. To the Committee on Rules. Message dated March 21, 2023, informing the House that on March 20, 2023, the Senate designated Senators Legarda, Binay, Pimentel as conferees to the Bicameral Conference Committee on the disagreeing provisions of Senate Bill 1841 and 5110. The Committee on Rules. Committee Reports. Committee Report Number 476, submitted by the Committee on Foreign Affairs on House Bill Number 7763. To the Committee on Rules. Committee Report Number 477, submitted by the Committee on Economic Affairs, the Committee on Trade and Industry, and Committee on Ways and Means, and the Committee on Appropriations on House Bill Number 7764. To the Committee on Rules. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I would like to acknowledge the guests of the Honorable Amparo Pami Zamora of the 2nd District of Taguig. Ms. Pamela Sua and Ms. Amelia Sua, representatives of Taguig in the forthcoming Palarong Pambansa 2023. To the guests of uh, Congresswoman Amparo Maria Pami Zamora, welcome to the House of Representatives. Palakpakan po natin yung mga guests ni Congresswoman Zamora. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I would also like to acknowledge the guests of the Honorable Maria Victoria Copilar of the 6th District of Quezon City. They're the journalism team of Ismael Matay Senior High School, namely Modesto Villarin, Ramil John Magno, Bernardita Moron, Benito Inigo Chan, Benito Joaquin Chan, Siren Quevedo, Top Saligan, Ron Eunice Diaz, Gabriel Caiz, Rowenson Riontoy, Rolando Dalla Jr., Shekina Jedidia Alima, Chris Jared Silvano, Bianca Del Rosario, Sam Gabriel Soliman, Juan Carlo Mercado, Zoe Sanchez. To the guests of Honorable Maria Victoria Copilar. Sampo kayo, tayo po kayo. Welcome to the House of Representatives. Palakpakan po natin. 
The Jolly Leader. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. At this point, we would like to um, greet our uh, Filipino boxing pride and champion, uh, Nonito, the Filipino Flash. Donara is right here uh, in plenary, Mr. Speaker. The pride of the Filipino. Donito Donaire is now here. Where are you? Welcome to the house of the people. Palakbakan po natin ang ating champion. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, we also would like to uh, greet the guests of uh, Representative Angelica Natasha Ko from the Child's Rights Center of the Commission on Human Rights. They're right here at the gallery, and there are 50 of them, Mr. Speaker. We'd like to welcome them, Mr. Speaker. To the guests of Congresswoman Angelica Natasha Ko, welcome to the House of Representatives. Palapakan po natin. Salamat po. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to re respectfully request that we recognize the guests of Honorable Speaker Ferdinand Martin G. Romualdez, Honorable Yeda Marie Romualdez, Honorable Sam S. Versosa Jr., and Honorable Richelle Singson, the candidates of Miss Universe Philippines. To, to the guests of our dear Speaker Ferdinand Romualdez Gomez Romualdez, and Congresswoman Yeda Romualdez, and Congressman Sam Versosa, welcome to the House of the People. Palakbakan po natin ang mga magagandang Pilipina. Salamat po. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to request to suspend session for a few minutes. Session suspended. Session resume. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, under the calendar of business for the day, I move that we consider House Bill number. 7751 as contained in committee report number 470. Motion to suspend. Session suspended.
Jobs. 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 Okay, game. Summer candidate. dito. Togo. Anak mo. Ikaw na lang muna dito. Sakit na ka. Dito ka, dito ka. Sakit na, sakit na. Kadunga ako sa ano? Meron ba? Tignan mo siguro kung taga, nandiyan ang probinsya mo, no? Tama, taga probinsya.
Okay, we will resume session in a short while. Okay, po. Okay, lang po. <laughs> okay, lang po. <laughs> Can we request now to our fellow members to go back to their proper seats so that we can resume session? Maraming salamat po. Thank you very much po to our candidate.
mga Ilonggo Power. Ilonggo Power, go. Kindly proceed here po. Hi, kindly proceed here na po. Thank you so much. It's okay, no worry. Sessions resume. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, under the calendar business for the day, I move, I move that we consider House Bill Number 751 as contained in Committee Report Number 470 and may I request that the Secretary General be directed to read the title of the bill. Is there any objection? The Chair is none. The Secretary General is now directed to read the title of House Bill Number 7751. House Bill 7751, an act establishing specialty centers in hospitals under the direct supervision and control of the Department of Health and appropriating funds, therefore. Georgia Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we open the period of sponsorship and debate. The period of sponsorship and debate is now open. Is there any objection? The chair is none. Motion is carried. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that the Chairperson of the Committee on Health, the, the Honorable Seriaco B. Gato Jr., be recognized to begin sponsorship of the said measure. Congressman Seriaco Gato Jr. is now recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, distinguished colleagues, this representation as Chairperson of the Committee on Health has the honor to present and sponsor before this August body the bill establishing specialty centers. This proposed legislation, Your Honors, is in furtherance of fulfilling our mandate to provide universal health care by ensuring the availability and accessibility of critical health care facilities and services for our countrymen who are afflicted with and are susceptible to the major burden of diseases across the country. As provided for in the bill, the specialty centers shall be established in the level three apex or end referral hospitals under the direct supervision and control of the Department of Health, which are closely linked to healthcare provider networks comprised of health facilities providing primary to tertiary level healthcare pursuant to the Universal Healthcare Act of 2019. In establishing the specialty centers, response to the top causes of morbidity and mortality shall be prioritized and shall be given utmost attention, such as cancer care, cardiovascular care, lung care, renal care, renal and kidney transplant care, brain and spine care, trauma care, burn care, orthopedic care, physical rehabilitation medicine, infectious disease and tropical medicine, toxicology, mental health, geriatric care, neonatal care, dermatology care, ear, nose, and throat care, and eye care. To ensure the quality and continuous development of specialized healthcare facilities and services, the proposed legisl legislation mandates the national specialty centers, such as the Philippine Heart Center, the National Kidney and Transplant Institute, the Lung Center of the Philippines, Philippine Children's Medical Center, the Philippine Lung Center, and other national specialty, specialty centers that may be established and designated by the Department of Health as such in the future, shall lead in the development of policies, protocols, and standards for the particular specialty and provide specialist training and technical assistance to the sub-national and regional specialty centers. Mr. Speaker, distinguished colleagues, 
On behalf of the Committee on Health, this representation seeks the support and immediate approval by this August body of the bill establishing specialty centers given its importance and urgency. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Good afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Sponsor, Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize Representative Franz Castro of ACT Teacher Party List for her interpretation. Congresswoman Franz Castro is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, magandang hapon muli sa ating lahat. Would the distinguished sponsor yield to some clarificatory questions? Gladly, Mr. Speaker. Yes, thank you, Mr. Speaker. So, ang representasyon pong ito ay binabati ang Committee on Health sa pag-aano, pag, no? Um, pag aproba nitong House Bill Number no. 7751, establishing specialty centers in hospitals under the direct supervision and control of the DOH and appropriating funds, therefore. So, ilan lang pong mga katanungan as regards doon sa funding, as regards po doon sa paano ba ito pipiliin, aling mga hospital, yung mga existing na mga national and regional or even provincial hospitals. Kasama po ba pala dito yung provincial hospitals or hindi na po? The uh, regional hospitals uh, will be included but uh, there is a criteria uh, set in this bill on the, the, on the selection of the, uh, specialty, the specialty centers, uh, Mr. Speaker. Okay, so... So there are regions, national hospitals under the DOH. Tama po ba, uh, Mr. Speaker? Yes, uh, Mr. Okay. Speaker. So halimbawa po, meron pong provincial hospitals that would uh, pass the criteria of the DOH for a specialty hospital. Pwede rin pa po ba siyang ma-include? Ma ma uh, if there is a provincial hospital, kasi I know there are provincial hospitals po, uh, Mr. Speaker, that is being managed and run by the local government units or the provincial. So if, the, if, if, if it passes the criteria set by the DOH uh, for it to establish a specialty has, a center, would that be possible in this bill, Mr. Speaker? It is possible, uh, Mr. Speaker. Okay. okay. Thank you for that clarification. Uh, when we say specialty centers, um, tignan ko nga po yung data natin. In, in, I know there are more than 100 hospitals run by the DOH, right? Um, may I know the exact number of, of hospitals under the DOH, uh, Mr. Speaker? I don't have the uh, uh, exact uh, figures, uh, Mr. Speaker, but I can... Uh provide you with the, uh, the numbers. Uh, mahalaga yun sa akin, Mr. Speaker, yung number ng mga hospitals dahil dito natin makikita no, kung, kung paano irrationalize yung pagdidistribute nitong mga specialty hospitals dahil alam naman natin, di ba? Um, yung bang usapin ng sana meron dito sa amin, ganito, ganyan, ganyan. So, um, would you know, uh, ilang po Mr. yung... Mr. Speaker, uh, I have just been informed by the uh, former Secretary of Health, we have 81, uh, 81. hospital under the okay. Department of Health. So there are 81 national um, and regional hospitals under the DOH. So out of 81 hospitals under the DOH, with the, with the specified specialty care centers, um, ilan po ba dito yung meron na na existing na mga specialty, cent specialty centers na, na nandito, Mr. Speaker? Meron na po tayong mga uh, regional hospitals na meron mga specialty uh, centers pero hindi pa kompleto yung 16. Uh, in this bill, 17 na uh, specialty specialty uh, specialties medical so, specialties this so is what we want to strengthen uh, the different the 17 specialties so that we can 
make available and accessible the specialty services that uh, our country uh, sorely lacks, uh, Mr. Speaker. Okay, so ang ibig sabihin ni po, nito po, alibaba kung napili ang isang uh, DOH hospitals sa Batanes, halimbawa, ako meron ba? So, or sa Ilocos, uh, ito pong 17 specialty care um, will be completed there. So, ibig sabihin, 17 specialty, specialty care centers ang ilalagay yes. doon sa isang uh, In DOH every hospital. region, uh, we in, we, the, the goal is to establish 17 specialty centers at least in every region and then on the basis of the criteria set in this bill as, uh, as in the, the, the number of uh, uh, capable hospitals, the number of uh, available human resources or available specialists, uh, pwede na magdagdag pa ng specialty centers within that region. And then there are levels of specialty centers. There is the regional, and then you have the, the, the basic comprehensive specialty center, uh, Mr. Yes, Speaker. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, distinguished sponsor. So, so yun na nga po, for example, itong hospital na ito, so kukumplitohin po ba natin yung facilities for the 70 specialty care, uh, uh, specialty care clinic or center? Or... Or ang iniisip ko po, halimbawa, ito sa hospital na to, andito yung, ano, andito yung uh, cancer care, cardiovascular care, lungs, lung care, renal yes. care. Pero wala naman dyan yung brain, spine care, trauma care, burn, etc. So lahat po ito ilalagay doon It, sa, sa isang the, the specialty hospital. centers need not be concentrated in one okay. hospital in that region. Okay. Uh, that will also be dependent also on the capability of that selected hospital and at the same time on the burden of disease and also on the capability of the other areas within that region. Okay. Uh, so, malinaw po, uh, Mr. Speaker, no? so hindi naman po sa isang hospital concentrated itong 17. So, pwedeng uh, lima o apat sa isang one, hospital yes. na nandoon sa region, pwedeng yung other specialty clinic or center nandoon naman sa other hospital ng isang regions. So, hindi siya concentrated sa isang hospital. Yes, Mr. Speaker. Okay. So, malinaw po, uh, Mr. Speaker. Okay. So, sa definition of terms, yung advanced comprehensive specialty center at saka yung basic comprehensive specialty uh, center, uh, kindly educate me, Mr. Sponsor, about the difference, no? Kasi ang alam ko lang, yung primary care, yung intermediate uh, care. So, uh, paano po ba yung difference nito dito sa advanced and basic comprehensive specialty care? Uh, I will uh, cite an example na lang sa ENT kasi I'm an ENT uh, uh, doctor. Like, when you say a basic uh, specialty center, nandun yung mga basic uh, facilities for common ENT uh, diseases. So, dapat uh, nandun sa, sa center na yun or sa hospital na yun yung, say, yung mga common diseases that are found sa ENT specialty. Now, should you encounter diseases that will require a specialized equipment or facilities like, say, operating microscopes or, uh, say, um, uh, reconstruction surgery of the uh, trauma of the head and neck, then kailangan na niyang i-refer dun sa regional or the sub-national uh, 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 specialty center within that region. And then, when this, the, yung may tertiary care na, yung super specialized na kailangan na, for example, a cochlear implant for uh, congenital deafness or severe deafness, kailangan mo nang i-refer yan usually sa mga uh, national referrals uh, or national specialty hospitals which is usually located uh, sa, sa Manila or within that region. Kung meron na-establish na, na apex hospital doon sa region na yun, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, okay. So, ang ibig sabihin po, Mr. Speaker, uh, distinguished sponsor, so doon po sa example ninyo, so yung isang pasyente halimbawa na nangangailangan, halimbawa na maoperahan yung kanilang mata, and yet, dito sa, halimbawa, sa region na ito, 
meron naman itong uh, ENT, di ba? Or, or sa OFTA. So, kailangan or, pa pala or na pumunta siya example, sa Manila o pumunta siya sa urbanized area na kung saan nandoon yung uh, yung tinatawag nating mass advanced comprehensive specialty. So, hindi po ba pwedeng pag sinabi nating pag nagkaroon tayo ng specialty uh, clinic, halimbawa sa kidney, pag sinabi ba nating specialty clinic sa kidney, di ba dapat ando doon na lahat? Doon sa hospital uh, na yon kasi doon sa region, pa... yes. Uh, uh, That is the goal. Dapat dun sa region na yon, sa levels of uh, uh, specialty centers, dapat available dun sa region na yon. Uh, yes, Mr. katulad Speaker. sa Mr. Speaker, sa heart center. So, from, from basic to more complicated yes. uh, na disease on, on, on heart, di ba? So, ando doon na siya sa heart center. So, so ganun ko na-envision yung sinasabi nating specialty yes. clinic. Kasi parang sinasabi niyo po sa example niyo, parang mai-refer pa siya doon sa mga specialty hospital na kung saan nando doon yung ano. Kasi ang ini-envision ko dito, if I am right, kapag specialty clinic ka na, center ka na sa isang national hospital, ando doon ang lahat yung mga kinakailangan mong care or kinakailangan mong gamot or facilities. The end goal, uh, Mr. Speaker, is that Pagdating na sa tertiary level or sa level sub uh, super specialty care, dapat available na rin within that region. In other words, you need not go to Manila to have a heart transplant. Dapat mayroon na rin uh, heart transplant uh, capability uh, ang specialty center doon sa region, uh, Mr. Speaker. Yes, oo. Tama po yun, uh, Mr. Speaker. So, yun po yung nakikita ko sana na end goal nito, no? Hindi lang ba, parang uh, nagtatayo tayo ng specialty clinic na talaga namang um, later on, pag nangailangan yung pasyente ng mga mas advanced na treatment, ay i-refer pa natin yan sa Manila o pupunta pa yan sa, sa city or urbanized area na may, kaila, may, 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 may ganong facility. So, kailangan meron na rin doon just in case na mapondohan ito. Tama? Yes, yes okay, Mr. Speaker. Sige. Um, doon po sa section 6 of the of, of our bill states that the Philippine Health Facility Development Plan or the PHFDP will serve as a guide for investments funded by the national government to rationalize the distribution of capacity and capability of the health facilities So, uh, can you um, explain, uh, Mr. Speaker, distinguished sponsor, yung uh, magiging function itong PHFDP? So, meron na rin po ba tayong copy nun? Itong Philippine Health Facility Development Plan na sinaside po natin on Section 6. Nasa ano pala yun, uh, Mr. Speaker? Mr. Section 7, uh, Mr. Section Speaker. 7. So, itong Philippine Health Facility Development Plan. Kasi medyo red flag sa akin yung sinasabing investments dito. Uh, uh, pwede pong bang ipaliwanag itong sinasabi natin dito sa Philippine Health Facility Development Plan or the PHFDP on page 4, sec, uh, line 5. The, there is an office uh, uh, under the Department of Health which shall uh, provide the guidelines and um, uh, rationalize the distribution and the capaci capacity and the capability of the health facilities in that region, uh, Mr. Speaker. So this is in, in the DOH main office, tama po? Under the Department of Health, the Department. Uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, so, this will be, meron na po ba ito or, or it would be created pa? When it, is, bill... it is existing, uh, okay. Madam, uh, Mr. Speaker. So, this is existing. Do we have a copy of this plan? 
meron na po ba tayo nung, kasi plan to, no? Development plan. Yes. So we do will, we have it? We will provide, uh, Mr. Speaker. Okay, so para makita po natin, ano, kasi uh, in terms of funding, so sinasabi natin dito that the fund uh, will be from, uh, will be sourced from the existing, upon the, uh, upon the initial implementation, yung fund po or yung budget will be derived from the existing, ano no, existing fund from the DOH. So, tama po ba yan, uh, Mr. Speaker? So, as of now po, magkano po ba yung fund na, na, na nandoon ngayon? As an initial uh, budget for the uh, establishment of specialty centers, it will be uh, uh, charged against the uh, existing uh, uh, general appropriations for the depart under the Department of Health. As of now, po, magkano po ang nandoon sa sa ating budget so for 2023? Kasi sabi niyo po, di ba, may existing na po na fund uh, for this. So Kung meron na po itong halimbawa, yung PHFDP. So, meron po bang naka-itemize sa ating budget this 2023? Mr. Speaker. Uh, the initial fund, Mr. Speaker, is under the, the uh, umbrella fund of the Health Facility and Enhancement Program under the Department of Health, uh, Mr. Speaker. Magkano po yun? Um, uh, would, would, would you know, uh, Mr. Speaker, kung magkano yung I don't have the uh, exact figure, uh, budget. Uh, Mr. Speaker. So, tinatanong po natin, Mr. Speaker, yung initial na budget, kung meron na po, sabi kasi existing na itong PHFDP na kung saan, nandoon na po yung plano, no? Nung pagtatayo ng mga specialty, specialty centers at kung paano i-rationalize yung distribution of capacity and capability itong mga health facilities. So, kailangan ko pong malaman yung budget doon dahil ito na naman po, malapit naman naman po ang budgeting season para matulungan uh, po natin ang DOH no, na makapag-source, ng, makapagkuha ng fund. The, the fund is 7 billion but it is specifically for the uh, health facility and in, in enhancement uh, program fund, we don't have the, uh, the uh, figure, uh, Mr. Speaker. So, ito na po ba yung budget doon sa mga HFEP? Yung 7 billion, Mr. Speaker, distinguished sponsor. Wala po tayong figure for the HFEP, uh, Mr. Speaker. Hindi, tinatanong ko po kung ito rin po ba yung budget dun sa mga HFEP? A portion um, uh, of the budget, uh, Mr. Speaker. Okay. Sige. Uh, thank you po, uh, Mr. Speaker. So may portion daw dito sa ating 7 billion ano, dun sa... Kasi tinitignan ko lang po yung, ano, no, yung uh, um, possibility na talang maitatayo itong mga specialty uh, centers natin. Kaya tinatag, tinitignan ko po yung budget. At paano natin i-adjust later on, on 2024 budget, yung pwedeng ilaan dito. And at the same time, yung budget na ilalaan dun sa buong hospital. Okay? So, um, Ilan po sa ano no, may mga items na rin po naman akong nakita doon sa PHFDP 2020 to 2020, 2040. At meron po ditong summary on page I 
na ang nakalagay po doon, no, without sacrificing the goals of equity and universal access health, access, health care, provider, networks of local government should consider health infrastructure as investments that have income generating potential. So, ang ibig pong, pong sabihin na ito ay magiging ano siya, uh, mas more on ba dun sa magiging income generating itong magiging specialty centers? Kasi nangangamba po ako kung ito ang goal nitong PHFDP na ang ibig sabihin mag, um, ba, magbabayad ang pasyente na, na masiservisyuhan itong specialty clinic. Kasi ang dyan yan sa PHFDP na plan. So, ang ibig sabihin yan, kapag ito po ay kinonek natin sa investments, ibig sabihin yun, may tubo. So, ibig sabihin nun, um, paano po doon hindi kaya makukompromise yung sinasabi nating health services sa ating mga kababayan? Kung halimbawa ay nakafocus, kasi base lang dito sa binasa ko, no? Doon sa investment, at uh, ito po ay mag income generate. Okay, so nangangamba po ako na baka magbay magbayad ng malaki ang ating mga kababayan na mag, mag avail nitong mga specialty center na ito. There will be special specialty centers that will uh, be profitable and uh, that will uh, subsidize the other uh, special uh, the other specialty or the 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 patients that uh, are financially uh, incapable, uh, Mr. Speaker. So, ang magiging tanong ko din po dito, no, would, did, would, did be, would this be a publicly owned or government yeah. uh, people tax funded? Or magkakaroon yes, din ng... Yes, it's uh, publicly owned. In fact, it's under the Department of uh, Health, uh, Mr. Speaker. Yes, publicly owned because of the DOH. Pero ito po ba ay ano no, uh, government tax kasi yung gagamitin nito, di ba? Tax funded ng ating mga mamamayan. Yes, Mr. Speaker. So kailangan kung tax funded ito, ibibigay itong libre, comprehensive, quality na service, health services na ibibigay sa ating mga mamamayan. Majority will be given uh, for free. Okay, pero... Pwede rin po bang pumasok dito yung public-private partnership? Uh, in this bill, there is no uh, uh, provision for uh, public-private partnership, uh, Mr. Speaker. Okay. So, yun lang po yung uh, tinitiyak natin doon. Ano? Kasi pag pumasok na po kasi ang private sector, so syempre, iniisip lagi natin pag public sector, ay private sector, mas maganda ang serbisyo. Pero partly funded ng government. Tapos sisingilin yung ating mga mamamayan dito sa mga specialty centers na ito. So, sana matiyak ng bill na ito, Mr. Speaker, na talagang ang ating mga kababayan ay makaka-avail ng, uh, ng libre o kung meron mang siguro silang babayaran ay minimal para po doon sa kanilang health services. Okay. Uh, thank you po, uh, Mr. Speaker. So, Again, re-reviewin ko din po pa, re-reviewin kasi ang, ang, ang haba nito, no? Re-reviewin pa rin po natin itong ano, no? Itong PHFDP kasi dito nakalagay eh yung framework nitong mga specialty centers na ito. Okay, so... On Section 9, uh, Mr. Speaker, Distinguished Sponsor... Ang nakalagay po dito, no, um, ano po kaya ang magiging epekto noong mga uh, primary care and immediate, uh, intermediate care na nandoon sa hospital niyan in terms of budget? So, hiwalay po ba yung budget ng mga specialty centers doon sa budget ng buong ospital. Kasi alam niyo po, Mr. Speaker, dito po sa tinagal-tagal ko sa Kongreso, halos taon-taon binabawasan ang, ano, no, ang budget ng mga hospital 
especially yung mga MOOE, kaya nga meron nga tayong mga karanasan na kapag pupunta ka sa ospital, uh, ultimong bulak, no, nagdo-donate yung mga pasyente. So ano po kayong mag kaya ang magiging implication ng budget ng isang ospital na may specialty clinic? Magkakaroon po ba ito ng hiwalay na budget doon sa kabuuan ng ospital? It will be integrated, uh, the budget will be integrated into the uh, budget for that uh, uh, particular specific uh, hospital where the specialty centers are uh, located, uh, Mr. Speaker. So, kapag magiging integrated, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, distinguished sponsor, so, mag, uh, ano na naman po tayo, no? mag-expect na naman po tayo ng kakulangan ng budget, particularly dun sa mga primary and intermediate care na binibigay ng ospital. Kung ito po ay integrated, um, nangangamba po ako na mababawasan yung budget natin. Kasi kulang na nga, kulang na nga po yung budget na ibinibigay natin sa mga ospital, di ba? Nagtatry na lang yung pamunuan ng ospital for income generating. Di ba? So, minsan, magpapa-X-ray ka, wala dito sa ospital na to, pupunta ka pa dun sa labas para magpa-X-ray. Ang aim kasi natin, halimbawa, yung mga basic na mga diagnostic test, like, like yung mga blood test na yan, yung x-ray, ano pa ba, yung urinalysis, etc. Dapat nandoon na, nakulang nakulang po yan sa ating mga ospital. So paano po natin um, mapupu mapupunan yung ganong kakulangan kung magkakaroon na tayo ng specialty center doon sa ospital na yan? In fact, uh, Mr. Speaker, the establishment of specialty centers is in line with the Universal Health Care uh, Act. In fact, the 16 uh, specialty centers is now being implemented by the Department of Health. There is uh, an additional specialty in this bill, the 17th, which is the ear, nose, and throat. Uh, Mr. Yes, Speaker. okay. So, hindi pa po nasasagot ba, Mr. Speaker, distinguished sponsor, yung um, budgetary requirement. Kung, kung kulang na nga yung binabudget natin sa mga ospital, supposedly walang specialty center, magtatayo pa lang tayo doon. So, paano kaya natin yan translate later on dun sa budgeting natin? Kasi magbabudget na naman tayo for 2024. So, paano kaya mayroon po bang formula na idadagdag? Or mag, alimbawa, Etong ospital na ito ay pasado na siya for specialty centers. O lalaanan na natin niya ng pondo ng 100 million or 200 million para sa specialty centers. May ganun po bang mga formula? The, uh, the specialty centers will actually uh, address the problem of the local government unit hospitals that lack or that, uh, that, is, uh, that is incapable of providing the specialty services that the most... Uh, LGU hospitals uh, are in now, uh, Mr. Speaker. And therefore, there is no, uh, there is uh, uh, in, uh, comprehensive and integrative ang, ang, ang specialty hospitals with the uh, uh, local government hospitals in the, in the general uh, health services doon sa, sa region or down to the local government units, uh, Mr. Speaker. Okay, so sinasabi natin, di ba, kapag mayroong pasado na mga local, mga local government units na mga hospitals, ano doon din yung specialty centers, tama po. So paano po kaya yung hatian ng budget noon? Hindi po kaya magkakaroon ng, ano, ano, magkakaroon ng uh, uh, confusion, uh, kaguluhan, as regards to Kung paano, magkano ba ipopondo ng LGU, magkano ipopondo ng DOH? If, if based on the criteria of the Department of Health uh, and then the, the local government hospital meets the criteria, then a specialty center can be established in that local government hospital, uh, Mr. Speaker. Okay, so uh, let's say hindi buo yung budget na ano, no? O hindi natin na buo yung mga needed budget for the specialty center sasagutin ito ng gobyerno. So, paano kaya hanapan ng DOH hospitals ito ng pondo? At ano kaya yung pwede pang maging source ng DOH, uh, Mr. Speaker? Uh, of course, uh, we, 
it is for the Congress to uh, augment a budget of the Department of Health to uh, address the problem of budget under this uh, uh, law or the bill, and then of uh, donations. Uh, as uh, I, I manifested earlier, the specialty centers will have uh, pay, 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 pay patients, uh, which will in, inter, which will in, which in turn will subsidize the uh, the needs of those who cannot pay, uh, Mr. Speaker. Okay, so meron din po palang ano? Meron din po palang part na magbabayad yung pasyente na may kakayanan. Yes, uh, Mr. Speaker. Tapos yung ating mga pasyente na may hirap, uh, pwede siyang isubsidize doon sa pay, pay ward. Gano'n yes. po ba yung bina, yes, bina, binaplano natin? Okay, so ayun uh, nga po, uh, Mr. Speaker, nangangamba rin tayo no, na kapag hindi rin ito na, na pondohan ng buong-buo ng GAA o ng pondo ng national government at aasa rin later on doon sa pondo na manggagaling din sa LGU. Later on, kung magkakaroon tayo ng specialty centers sa mga provincials or LG, LGU mand na mga ano no, na mga hospitals, ay talagang ano no, talagang malaki din yung i-contribute ng ating mga LGU dito. Tama po ba ang aking Tama po, uh, Mr. Okay. Speaker. Sige. Okay, um So yung uh, last na lang po ano dito sa ano no, dito sa uh, report to the Congress. So, sinasabi natin dito, the OH shall provide Congress through Committee on Health noong, ano, no, yun, noong, and Committee on Health and Demography of the Senate an annual report of its activities, accomplishment, and operational plan of the specialty centers. So, ito po ay every year na kapag napupond, napondohan na po ito. Pero ngayon po ba doon sa sinasabi niyong may existing na mga specialty centers na po dun sa, ita, sa iba nating mga national hospitals. Meron na po ba tayong report ng accomplishments and performance nitong mga specialty hospitals that are already uh, in our different hospitals by the DOH? Wala pa po, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, in fact, uh, nasa te technical working group pa yung mga, uh, ibang mga spe uh, specialties uh, under the Department of Health. Uh, Pero dun, sabi niyo po, gumagana na yung ating Yes, mga it's being implemented ibang, and the, in, the implementation starts with the technical working group. Okay, kasi... the determining of the selection of the, uh, the hospitals where the special, specialty centers will be uh, established, uh, among others, uh, Mr. Speaker. Y yes, um, na medyo po na-confuse ako, Mr. Speaker. Sabi niyo kanina, meron ng mga specialty centers sa ibang mga national hospitals na gumagana na. So, ang tanong ko po, uh, meron bang tayo from the DOH yung mga performance, uh, accomplishment, activities uh, ng, ng mga hospitals na ito o nasa technical working group pa lang meron, yung pagpili? Meron na pong mga uh, uh, specialty departments na ito ay kailan i-strengthen under the uh, Universal Healthcare Program. Uh, Doon pumapasok yung sinasabi ko, Mr. Chairman, yung 16 specialties. Okay. Uh, that needs to be strengthened, uh, yes. Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you po. Meron ng mga specialty department na kung saan ito yung i-strengthen. So yun nga po yung sinasabi ko, meron na po ba tayong performance nitong mga specialty department na existing ngayon dun sa Doon mga sa hospital. oversight na wala pa, Mr. Speaker. Okay, so... Pwede po ba tayong makakuha noon? Meron po bang available will, na data? We will ask from the Department of Health and we will submit uh, uh, Mr. Speaker. Okay. Th uh, thank you po, uh, Mr. Speaker. So, yun lang po, uh, Mr. Speaker. No? Sinasabi natin that in every national budget deliberation, lagi natin inilalaban na ma-restore ang mga proposed budget ng DOH kasi lagi itong kinakaltasan ng DBM sa NEP. Hindi naman sa lahat ng pagkakataon ay naibabalik ito ng Kongreso. Lalabas, Mr. Speaker, magiging kahati ang specialty center na ito na itatayo sa ilalim ng batas na ito 
sa pondo na sana ay magagamit para sa general services ng hospital. Hindi naman sa ayaw natin na magkaroon ng mga specialty center sa bawat rehiyon, pero Mr. Speaker, ayaw natin na lilikha tayo ng batas na physical structure lamang ito na itatayo at walang uh, kaukulang budget, especially yung mga MOOE at saka yung personal uh, personal uh, expenses. So kailangan ano no? Etong mga specialty centers natin, Mr. Speaker, ay talagang gusto natin ito at kailangan mapondohan natin. At hindi lang yung mga physical structures o masabi lang na mayroong department na specialty, clean, specialty center dyan. So, yun lang po, uh, Mr. Speaker. Maraming salamat po sa ating distinguished sponsor. Thank, Thank you, Congresswoman Brands. Thank you, Mr. Sponsor. Majority Leader. Uh, Mr. Speaker, there being no other members who wishes to interpolate, I move that we terminate the period of sponsorship and debate. The period of sponsorship and debate is now closed. Is there any objection? The chair is none. Motion is carried. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we open the period of amendments. The period of amendment is now open. Is there any objection? The chair is done. Motion is carried. Majority Leader. Uh, Mr. Speaker, there being no committee amendments, I move that we now proceed to consider the individual amendments. Is there any objection? The chair is done. Motion is approved. Mr. Speaker, there being no member who wishes to introduce individual amendments, I move that we close the period of individual amendments. The period of individual amendments is now closed. Is there any objection? The chair is done. Motion is approved. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we vote on second reading of House Bill number 7751. Is there any objection? There is a uh, motion to approve. House Bill number uh, 7751. Those who are in favor, please say aye. aye. And those who are against, please say nay. The highs of it. House Bill number 7751 is now approved on second reading. Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Sponsor. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, may we please acknowledge the guests of Honorable Speaker Martin Romualdez, and they are the following. His Excellency Miguel Uchay Delgado, Ambassador to the Philippines of the Kingdom of Spain. Colonel Javier Martin Garcia, Spanish Defense Attaché in Manila. Mr. Ramon Garcia, Jr., Honorary Consul of Portugal for Manila. Mr. Guillermo Samaripa, Senior Area Sales Manager, Navancia. Mr. Edwin Mendoza, Director of ADAC Firepower. Mr. Jerwell Sanchez, Vice President of DCI. Mr. Anthony T, ADAC Firepower. Mr. Andrew Romualdez, ADAC Firepower. And Attorney Glenn D. Guzman, Corporate Secretary of ADAC Firepower. To the guests of our dear Honorable uh, Speaker, Speaker Ferdinand Martin G. Romualdez. To the guests, your Excellencies, welcome to the House of the People. Palakpakan po natin ang ating mga bisita. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, we'd like to uh, welcome the guests of uh, our representative from the 2nd District of Southern Leyte, uh, Congressman Christopher Cojoyap. Our visitors from Radio Pilipinas, they are Dindo Silvestre Alaraz, Geraldine Parado, and Glenn Parado. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Speaker, thank you. To the guests of Congressman Christopher Son Coco and Biap, to the guests, welcome to the House of Representatives. Palakpakan po natin yung mga guests. Ni Congressman Yap. Salamat po. Congressman, uh, Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker. Yes, Mr. Majority Leader, please We would proceed. like also to acknowledge the presence of our four young leaders of our country who represented the Philippine delegation in the American Council of Political Leaders, a partnership with the U.S. Embassy and the National Movement of Young Legislators since 1991, of which both and our Majority Floor Leader, Kong Mannix, had also previously presented the country in such prestigious international exchange. For this year, we have my sister, former counselors, and immediate past president of the National Movement of Young Legislators, Lady Julie Grace Lavla Baranda of Iloilo City. Vice Mayor Jan Paul Lampig of Boston Davao Oriental, Councillor Kyle Salazar of General Strias Cavite, and also one of our very own and youngest Congresswoman of the Republic of the Philippines, Congresswoman Samantha Santos. 
To the guests of uh, Congresswoman uh, Jam Jam and Congresswoman Maria Alana Samantha Talino Santos, welcome to the House of Representatives. Palakpakan po natin. Thank you po. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, may we please acknowledge also the guests of Honorable Chairney Jetty Benesai, representative of Pusong Pinay Party List, and they are um, Honorable Jester Ivan Recaparente, Municipal Councillor of Mariveles Paraan, and Ms. Jessamar Villasis, Policy Analyst of Municipal Government of Mariveles Paraan. The guests of uh, Honorable Journey Jet Desai of the Pusong Pinoy Party List, so the guests. Welcome to the House of Representatives. Palakapakan po natin. Maramat po. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move for the change of referral of the following measures. House Resolution Number 827, congratulating and commending the Philippine athletes who, win, who won in the 7th ASEAN Jiu-Jitsu Championship held in Bangkok, Thailand last February 2023 from the Committee on Rules on Youth and Sports Development to the Committee on Rules. House, Please proceed. House Resolution Number 829, Inquiry on the Oil Spill from and Sinking of Mount Princess Empress from the Committee on Ecology to the Committees on Ecology and Natural Resources. House Resolution Number 835, Inquiry on the Sufficiency of our Maritime Laws and Safety Standards and other related measures to ensure accountability of sea carriers involved in maritime accidents in the context of the recent oil spill caused by capsized oil tanker of cost of Oriental Mindoro, from the Committee on Ecology to the Committees on Ecology and Natural Resources. House Resolution Number 101, Inquiry on the Status and Implementation of the Recovery, Reconstruction, and Rehabilitation Program of Marawi City, from the Committee on Disaster Resilience to the Ad Hoc Committee on Marawi Rehabilitation and Victims' Compensation. Privileged speech of Rep. Adjong delivered on August 15, 2022, Marawi Compensation Law, from the Committee on Disaster Resilience to the Ad Hoc Committee on Marawi Rehabilitation and Victims' Compensation. So moved, Mr. Speaker. Is there any objection on the motion for the change of referral? The chair is none. The motion is approved. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, we are in receipt of a message from the Senate informing the House that the Senate passed with amendments House Bill Number 4635 entitled An Act Extending the Term of Office of the President of the Adjong Memorial State College from three years to four years in accordance with Republic Act Number 8292, otherwise known as the Higher Education and Modernization Act of 1987, amending for the purpose Republic Act Number 8651 as amended and appropriating funds therefore. We have been advised that the Committee on Higher Ed and Technical Education, sponsor of House Bill Number 4635, as well as its authors, have no objections to the amendments of the Senate to this measure. Mr. Speaker, in accordance with the rules, I move that we concur with the Senate amendments to House Bill Number 4635. So, Mr. Speaker. Is there any objection on the concurrence of the proposed amendment of the Senate? The Chair is none. The motion is approved. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move for the consideration of House Resolution Number 395 and request that the Secretary General be directed to read the title of the said resolution. The Secretary General is now directed to, to read the title of the resolution. House Resolution 395, Resolution Creating the House of Representatives Institute for Legislation and Legislative Governance and for Other Purposes. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move for the adoption of House Resolution Number 395 in consolidation with House Resolution Number 21. There is a motion to approve the uh, adopt the proposed uh, resolution. Those who are in favor, please say aye. Aye. And those who are against, please say nay. The high Savit, the proposed resolution is now adopted. In consolidation with House Resolution Number 21, Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move for the consideration of House Resolution Number 864 and request that the Secretary General be directed to read the title of the said resolution. There is a motion. The Secretary General is now directed to read the, right, uh, the title of the resolution. House Resolution Number 864. Resolution honoring and commending the Junior Chamber International, JCI Philippines, 
on its 75th anniversary and for its notable contributions to the development of the country. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move for the adoption of House Resolution Number 864. There is a motion to adopt Resolution Number 864. Those who are in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those who are against, please say nay. The high Sabbath. House Resolution Number 864 is now adopted. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move for the consideration of House Resolution Number 889 and request that the Secretary General be directed to read the title of the said resolution. The Secretary General is directed to read the title of the resolution. House Resolution Number 889, Resolution Congratulating and Commending Filipino Jiu-Jitsu Athletes Margarita Megio Ochoa, Jenna Kaila Napolis, Annie Ramirez, and Dylan Crystal Rain Valmores for winning gold medals, and Mark Alexander Lim and Andrea Lois Lau for winning bronze medals, in the 7th Jiu-Jitsu Asian Championship held at the Rangsit University Stadium in Bangkok, Thailand from February 24 to 28, 2023. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move for the adoption of House Resolution Number 889 in consolidation with House Resolution 827. There is a motion to adopt House Resolution Number 889. Those who are in favor, please say aye. Aye. And those who are against, please say nay. The highs have it. House Resolution Number 889 with consolidation of Committee Report Number with House Resolution Number 827 is now adopted. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move for the consideration of House Resolution Number 890 and request that the Secretary General be directed to read the title of the said resolution. The Secretary General is now directed to read the title of the resolution. House Resolution Number 890. Resolution expressing the profound condolences of the House of Representatives to the family of Bishop Emeritus Angel Tech Ihobayan, Didi, of the Diocese of Katarman, Province of Northern Samar. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move for the adoption of House Resolution Number 890. There is a motion to adopt House Resolution Number 890. Those who are in favor, please say aye. aye. Those who are against, please say nay. The highs have it. House Resolution Number 890 is now adopted. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move for a few minutes suspended. Session suspended.
Sessions resume. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we include additional co-authors to House Bill Number 7751 as contained in the list to be submitted by the Committee on Rules. So move, Mr. Speaker. Is there any objection on the additional co-authors? Chair is done. Motion is approved. Majority Mr. Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move to suspend session for a few minutes. Session suspended.
Session resume. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, may we acknowledge the guests of Speaker Martin Romualdez and the Honorable Sieda Marie K. Romualdez and Jude Asidre of Tingog Party List, namely Sam Manuel Sombiro, Creative Consultant of the Speaker's Office, and Jay Ibanez, City Tourism Officer. So move, Mr. Speaker. The guests of Speaker Martin Romualdez and uh, Congresswoman Yeda Romualdez and Congressman Jude Asidre of Tingog Party List, welcome to the House of Representatives. Thank you, Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, um, may we suspend session for a few minutes? Yes, so suspend it. Sessions to Zoom. Lord Leader. Mr. Speaker, I would like to acknowledge the guest of Speaker Martin Romualdez, Congressman Yeda Marie Romualdez, and Congressman Jude Asidre of Tingog Partilist, namely the Municipal Mayor, Honorable Norman D. Sabdao. Honorable Jane pa Pajares, Honorable Ronald L. U. Honorable Agustin Borer, Honorable Arlan Magallanes, 
And the barangay captain of barangay Baka, Bagakay, Lin, Cap, barangay captain Lyndon C. Vinyas, barang, barangay Bahay, barangay captain Jesse E. Asis, barangay Bayran, barangay captain Gavino Valleros, Kabatia Nuhan, barangay captain Erwin Valeriano, barangay Kanap, barangay captain Nority Acevedo, Kapilihan, Barangay Captain Eduardo Gay, Karikaray, Barangay Captain Trinidad A. Quintana, Kayare, Barangay Captain Cesar Restore, Ginshaman, Barangay Captain Samuel P. Salomon, Impo, Barangay Captain Imelda Quabalejo, Kinalumsan, Barangay Captain Marlene B. Supatan, Liptong, Barangay Captain Norman Martija. Lucay, Barangay Captain Francisco Macabansag. Malaginabot, Barangay Captain Ernesto Orojo. Malpag, Barangay Captain Pasita S. Abril. Mawod Pawod, Barangay Captain Leonardo T. Cadorna. Barangay Patong, Barangay Captain Juvita Riboso. Pinarigusan, Barangay Captain Esmeraldo T. Lego, San Andres, Barangay Captain Emma P. Brun, Santol, Barangay Captain Roselda P. Elbore, Santa Cruz, Barangay Captain Manuel S. Dominguez, and the associations, Barangay Captain uh, Mr. Christian Lesigues and Erma Bernales. To the guests of Speaker Martin Romualdez and Congresswoman Yeda Marie Romualdez and Jude Asidre of Tingog Partilis, the Municipal Mayor, all Barangay Captains, ABC President and ABC Staff, welcome to the House of Representatives. Palakpaka po natin. Salamat po. Lord Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move to suspend for a few minutes. Si Asya suspended.
causa desse dinheiro de interesse. Aí a menina não tem? Aí tem, não tem. Olha lá, bicho, ela tem mais.
akin na ang akin na kasulukan.
ko sino eh. Wala akong magigigamo na ako eh. Ay, may joke lang. Okay, okay lang. Ayan o. Ayan, ah, para maayos. Sessions resume, Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, we are in receipt of the Bicameral Conference Committee report on, this, on the disagreeing provisions of House Bill No. 6336 and Senate Bill No. 1850, emancipating agrarian reform beneficiaries from financial burden by condoning unpaid amortizations and interests and exempting payment of estate tax on agricultural lands. In accordance with our rules, I move that we ratify the said Bicameral Conference Committee report. There is a motion to ratify the Bicameral Conference Committee report on the disagreeing provisions of House Bill No. 6336 and Senate Bill No. 1850. Those who are in favor, please say aye. aye. Those who are against, please say nay. The highs of it, the said Bicameral Conference Committee report is hereby ratified. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, we are in receipt of the Bicameral Conference Committee report on the disagreeing provisions of House Bill No. 6517 and Senate Bill No. 1849, further strengthening professionalism and promoting the continuity of policies and modernization initiatives in the armed forces of the Philippines. In accordance with our rules, I move that we ratify the said Bicameral Conference Committee report. There is a motion to ratify the Bicameral Conference Committee Report on the Disagreeing Provisions of House Bill No. 6517 and Senate Bill No. 1849. Those who are in favor, please say aye. And those who are against, please say nay. The highs of it, the said Bicameral Conference Committee Report is now ratified. Your leader. Mr. Speaker, on the part of the majority, I move to elect the various members to the following committees as follows. To the Committee on Economic Affairs as member Morden Michael M. To the Committee on Government Reorganization as member Alvarez Jose C. To the Committee on Public Order and Safety as member Yamsuan Brian Raymond S. To the Committee on Basic Education and Culture as Vice Chairperson Remulia Crispin Diego D. To the Committee on Ethics and Privileges as member Remulia Crispin Diego D. To the Committee on Good Government and Public Accountability as Vice Chairperson Remulia Crispin Diego D. To the Committee on Human Rights as Member Remulia Crispin Diego D. To the Committee on Revision of Laws as Member Remulia Crispin Diego D. To the Committee on Science and Technology as Member Remulia Crispin Diego D. To the Special Committee on Food Security as Member Remulia 
Crispin Diego D. to the Special Committee on Southern Tagalog Development as Vice Chairperson Remulia Crispin Diego D. I so move. Is there any objection? The chair is done. The motion is approved. Congratulations to the new elected members of various committees. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move to suspend session for a few minutes. Session suspended. Session is resumed. Lord Leader. Yes, you spend it.
Session resume. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we authorize all committees to conduct meetings and or public hearings if deemed necessary during the House recess from March 23 to May 7, 2023. Is there any objection? The Chair hears none. The motion is approved. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move for the consideration of Committee Report Number 472, submitted by the Committee on Ethics and Privileges. There is a motion to consider Committee Report Number 472, submitted by the Committee on Ethics and Privileges. Is there any objection? The Chair hears none. The motion is approved. Mr. But Speaker, I move to recognize the chairperson of the Committee on Ethics and Privileges, the Honorable Pelimon M. Espares of Coop Natco Party List. Honorable Espares is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good evening, esteemed colleagues. Honorable members of this August body, it is my honor to report to you the result of the investigation contained in Committee Report Number 472 of the Committee on Ethics and Privileges on the case docketed as Committee Case Number MP 2023-6 against our own colleague, the distinguished representative Arnulfo Arni A. Tibis, Jr., of the third district of Negros Oriental. As everybody in this August body would know, this case became a celebrated one because it has put the institution with different views and perspectives surrounding his failure to return to the country despite the expiration of his travel clearance. This amounts to questions the institutional uh, moral foundation of this uh, institution to protect its integrity, dignity, and reputation as a mode of self-preservation and the committee in particular. Today, at this very moment, this representation as the chairperson of the Committee on Ethics and Privileges is presenting to this August body the committee recommendation on the, on the aforementioned case after conducting a rigid and exhaustive investigation that started on 15 March 2023 and concluded in 21 March 2023. Let us not be mistaken or mislead to numerous insinuations and beliefs as to the outcome of the investigation. We are at liberty to say that the real issue on the cases at hand is whether or not the conduct of Representative Arnulfo Arnie A. Tavis Jr. is staying abroad with expired travel clearance and his continued defiance to the orders of the House to return to the country and perform his duties as House member constitute disorderly behavior affecting the dignity integrity and reputation of the House of Representatives. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, the Committee on Ethics and Privileges hereby submits its committee report on the result of its investigation on the motu proprio investigation relative to Representative Arnulfo Arni A. Tavis Jr.'s personal foreign trip to United States of America with expired travel clearance and his continued defiance to the orders of the House to return to the country and perform his duties as House member. Pursuant to Section 7, Rule 1 of the Rules of the House of Representative, which constitute disorderly behavior affecting the dignity, integrity, and reputation of the House of Representative. Finally, after a thorough deliberation and observance of due process, 
the Committee on Ethics and Privileges hereby recommend to the House of the Representatives the imposition of the penalty of 60 days suspension from the service upon Representative Arnulfo Arni A. Tevez, Jr. for disorderly behavior. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move for the adoption of the findings and recommendations submitted by the Committee on Ethics and Privileges as contained in Committee Report Number 472. And for this purpose, direct the Secretary General to call the role of members for nominal voting. There is a motion to adopt the findings and recommendations submitted by the Committee on Ethics and Privileges as contained in Committee Report Number 472. Is there any objection? The Chair hears none. The motion is approved. The Secretary General is hereby directed to call the roll of members for nominal voting. Roll call of members in consideration for the adoption of Committee Report Number 472 submitted by the Committee on Ethics and Privileges. Honorable Representatives, Abalos, Abante, Abunda, Acharon, Asidre, Akop, Adyong, Advincula, Ag Agarao, Alba, Albano, Almario, Almonte, Alonte, Alvarez Jose, Alvarez Mercedes, Alvarez Pantaleon, Amante, Amatong, Ang, Angara, Aquino, Aquino Magsaysay, Arbison, Arenas, Arrogancia, Asistio, Ataide, Aumentado, Balindong, Barba, Barbers, Baronda, Barzaga, Bascug, Bautista, Bautista Lim, Benitez, Bernos, Billones, Biron, Bolivia, Bondoc, Bongalon, Bordado, Bosita, Briones, Brosas, Buhain, Bulut Bektang, Bustos, Cabredo, Cagas, Cahayon Uy, Calderon, Calixto, Campos, Kawagdan, Cardema, Cari, Castro France. Mr. Speaker. Yes, Your Honor, you are uh, recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My this representation uh, vote yes, and I will explain my vote later. Okay. Castro Jane, Celeste, Chan, Chato, Chua. Mr. Speaker. Yes. I vote no, and I will explain my vote later. Okay. Thank you. Tungalao, Ko Angelica Natasha, Ko Elizaldi. Ko Pilar, Ko Anko Jaime, Ko Anko Mark, Ko Lada, Ko Liantes, Corvera, Cruz Ambrosio, Cruz Ricardo, Kua, Quaresma, Dagook, Dalipe, Dalog, De Anghirang, Daza, De Jesus, De Venecia, Defensor, Del Mar, De Los Santos, Dimaporo Muhammad Khalid, Dimaporo City Amina, Dionisio, Domingo, Duavit, Duhali, Duterte, D. Faustino Ino, D. Faustino Michael Carlos, D. Ian Paul, Ecleo, Emano, Enverga, Escudero, Espares, Espina, Estrella, Yudela, Fariñas, Fernandez, Ferrer Antonio, Ferrer Juliet Marie, Flores, Cortes, Frasco, Fresnedi, Fuentebella, Galeos, Garcia Albert, Garcia Dante, Garcia Jose Arturo, Garcia Maria Angela, Garcia Pablo John, Garcia Vincent, Guardiola, Garin, Gasataya, Gato, Go Ed Christopher, Go Mark, Golez, Gomez, Gonzaga, Gonzalez Aurelio, Gonzalez Neptali, Gonzalez Sandro, Goriseta, Guico, Ginto, Gulias, Gutierrez, Hagedorn, Haresco, Ataman, Hernandez, Herrera, Oribata, Javier, Co Olga, Co Ricardo, 
Cowilton, Konghun, Labad-Labad, Lakson, Lakson Noel, Lagman, Lagon Daphne, Lagon Sunny, Lara, Lazatin, Lee, Legarda, Libanan, Lim Kaichong, Loyola, Luistro, Lumayag, Makapagalaroyo, Maceda, Madrona, Magsino, Malapitan, Mangawang, Manikis, Manuel, Maranyon, Marcoleta, Marcos, Mario Hernan Mariano Hernandez, Marino, Marquez, Martinez, Mastura, Matibag, Matugas, Mendoza, Mercado, Mercado Revilla, Miguel, Momo, Morden, Nava, Nisay, Noel, Nograles Juan Fidel Felipe, Nograles Margarita, Nolasco, Ominal, Olaso, Olivares, Ong Chuan, Ordanes, Ortega, Juan Dizon, Padernos, Aduano, Paglas, Palma, Panaligan, Pancho, Panotes, Pascual, Peña, Pimentel, Plaza, Plato, Primicias Agabas, Pumaren, Uno, Kimbo, Rama, Recto, Regencia, Remulia, Revilla Brian, Revilla Ramon Jolo, Reyes, Rilio, Rivera, Robes, Rodriguez Elogio, Rodriguez Rufus, Roman, Romero, Romualdez Ferdinand Martin, Romualdez Yeda Marie, Romualdo, Romulo, Roque, Sakdalan, Sagarbaria, Sakaluran, Salceda, Sali, Salimbangon, Salo, Salvame, Santos, Saulog, Silverio, Singson Richel, Singson Ronald, Singson Mihan, Solon, Suan, Suan Sing Horacio, Suan Sing Micaela Angela, Suarez, Taliado, Tamayo, Tambunting, Tan Joseph, Tan Keith Micah, Tan Reynolds Michael, Tan Samir, Tan Stephen James, Tan Tambut, Tan Chai, Tan Watko, Tariela, Teodoro, Tevez Arnolfo, Tevez Jose, Tianco, King, Tolentino, two for Jocelyn, two for Ralph Wendell, Tupas, Tutor, T, Umali, Unabia, Ungab, Valeriano, Valmayor, Vargas, Vargas Alfonso, Velasco, Veloso Tuazon, Vergara, Versosa, Villa, Villa Fuerte Luis Raymond, Villa Fuerte Miguel Luis, Villanueva, Villar, Villaraza Suarez, Villarica, Violago, Yam Suan, Yap Christian Tell, Yap Christopher Son, Yap Edvic, Yap Eric, U Divina Grace, U Jazel Victoria, Yulo, Zamora Amparo Maria, Zamora Maria Carmen, Zamora Isabel Maria, Zubiri. Second call of members in consideration of the motion to adopt the findings and recommendations contained in committee report number 472. Albano, Almonte, Alvarez Pantaleon, Bautista, Bondo, Dalog, Duterte, Pariñas, Paul Wilton, Lagman, Lazatin, Lim Kai Chong, Bangawang, Romero, Saulog, Tan Samir, Tan Stephen James, Tevez Arnolfo, Villanueva, Yap Edvic, Yap Eric. Mr. Speaker, I will change my vote to yes after reading the committee report thoroughly. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. So noted. Kong Lagman, yes. Kong Lagman, though, yes. 
Eh non, Galli che c'è. May I request the members to please settle down? Please take your seats. With 292 members voting in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and zero abstentions, the House hereby adopts the findings and recommendations contained in the committee report number 472 submitted by the Committee on Ethics and Privileges in the matter of Representative Arnulfo Arnie A. Tevez, Jr. Mr. Speaker, may we recognize Representative Franz Castro of ACT Teachers Party List. Okay. Representative Franz Castro is hereby acknowledged, recognized for his explanation. Thank, uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker and Majority Leader. May lang po, uh, Mr. Speaker and Majority Leader at mga kasama. Ang pagboto ng yes ng representasyong ito ay may kalakip na pasubali na dapat na ipatupad ang mga alituntuni ng Kamara upang panagutin ang mga kinatawan nito sa kanilang mga tungkulin at obligasyon sa ating mga mamayan ng pantay at walang pinipili. Yun lang po, Mr. Speaker. Salamat po. Uh, maraming salamat po. At uh, in line with the adoption of the recommendations of the Committee on Ethics and Privileges, the Secretary General is directed to furnish the appropriate agencies a copy of Committee Report Number 472. Our ever dearest colleagues, of the House of Representatives in this 19th Congress, the House Speaker, Ferdinand Martin Romaldes, will deliver his message. Thank you, Mr. Majority Leader, Honorable Deputy Speakers, Majority Leader, Minority Leader, distinguished colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. Before we adjourn and take our well-deserved break, let me commend and recognize every member of this august body for the commitment and untiring efforts that led to an impressive performance. 
We did not shirk from our responsibilities and we rose to the challenges that we as lawmakers must address. Our body of accomplishments during the past months proves that our ambitions and aspirations for a better nation are attainable. Mindful of the nation's most pressing needs, the House leadership ushered in the approval on third and final reading several priority measures listed in our common legislative agenda that provide vital services and protect our general safety. The House of Representatives approved 23 of the 31 bills identified by the Legislative Executive Development Advisory Council, known as the LEDAC, as priority measures of the Marcos administration. The 31 priority measures were drawn up from dozens of legislator, legislative measures that were filed in the Senate and the House to further stimulate economic activities, create job opportunities, and reduce poverty and provide better health care and services for our Filipino brothers and sisters. Of the 23 measures that we approve, two had been signed into law by President Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr., while the remaining eight bills in the LEDAC priority list are under advanced stages of deliberations. With overwhelming majority, we approved on third and final reading the National Government Rights Sizing Program, two, the E-Government Act, three, the Internet Trans Transaction Act or the E-Commerce Law, four, amendments to the Build, Operate and Transfer Law, five, the creation of government agencies such as the National Disease Prevention and Management Authority and the Virology Institute of the Philippines. Six, Passive Income and Financial Intermediary Taxation Act, the PIFITA. Seven, Government Financial Institutions Unified Initiatives Distress Enterprises for Economic Recovery, the Guide Act. Eight, Medical Reserve Corps. And nine, the Philippine Passport Act, among others. We also approved on third and final reading House Bill Number 5, which establishes an on-site, in-city, near-city or off-city local government resettlement program for informal settler families. House Bill Number 6, or the Open Access in Data Transmission Act. House Bill Number 7241, which strengthens the procedure of registration of voters and adopts a system of online registration. House Bill No. 7354, which establishes evacuation centers in every city and municipality, and House Bill 7387, which encourages private sector participation in the agricultural insurance. We looked further and moved toward protecting our countrymen from the untimely increase of premium rates of the Philippine Health Insurance Corporation with the approval of House Bill No. 6772, which grants the President the power to spend the increase of premiums. The welfare of women was also at the forefront of our agenda as we provide them the right to retain their maiden surnames through House Bill Number 4605. Promoting entrepreneurship and enterprise-based education, addressing unemployment and establishing a reinvestment framework for real estate investment trust, sponsors likewise gained traction as House bills on the subject were approved on third and final reading. Consistent with the administration's priority development plan, several notable pieces of legislation were approved on third and reading that delve on the diminishing poverty levels and promoting economic growth, including House Bill number 6608 or the Mahalika Fund Investment Act, House Bill number 4125 or the Ease of Paying Taxes Act. House Bill Number 7006, or the Automatic Income Classification Act for local government units. However, definitely ignited by our democratic energies and signaled moral consent for beneficial change was the approval of House Bill Number 7352, entitled an act implementing resolution of both houses number six of Congress of the Philippines calling for a constitutional convention to propose amendments to our 
Constitution, appropriating funds thereof or the Constitutional Convention Act. Together with the resolution of both houses, number six, these twin measures were voted overwhelmingly by the members with the firm belief that their passage would lead to genuine constitutional reforms. For the longest time, the East reforms have taken a back seat due to the misconceptions and perceived controversies. This time around, we will ensure a transparent and trustworthy process where the sovereign mandate of the people is kept safe. The House of Representatives also acknowledge the significance of e-governance in the efficient delivery of public goods and services. Hence, we have recently launched e-Congress, a partnership between the House of Representatives and the Senate, which enables both houses to digitize the legislative support processes, services, and records, and provide a platform for knowledge and for the exchange of information that are different from the other chambers, but are shared or made accessible to each other. The chamber gave careful attention to the public outcry against the exorbitant prices of onions, and through House Resolution Number 681, conducted an inquiry in aid of legislation on the anti-competitive prices and cartel in the onion industry, and the series of hearings have produced immediate positive results with the price of onions returning to previous levels and personalities involved in the hoarding and price manipulation being slowly unmasked. An equally pressing matter that warranted this chamber's urgent and sound response was the call for disciplinary action against Representative Arnulfo Tevez Jr. The House committed on ethics and privilege observing due process and fully cognizant of Representative Arnie's rights, conducted an investigation and submitted its report and a recommendation for plenary action. Under our leadership, the House of Representatives will never ever countenance any conduct unbecoming a House member. While legislation alone is rarely sufficient to ensure fast and equitable changes, our work initiated opportunities that were once unthinkable and hopefully would inspire the passing of future legislative measures that may be perceived as radical by some, but are actually beneficial to many. My dear colleagues, we owe our undiminishing passion for excellence to our vision for a united and inclusive House of Representatives and our steady and focused attention and our devotion to our duty to the people has rallied us to embody the will of the people and work in synergy to achieve our goals. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank our minority and its members for their conscientious participation during deliberations. And despite our differences in opinion, together we resolved all sorts of contentious issues and agreed to achieve productive ends for our country as a whole. As of today, the House of Representatives yield a total of 94 national bills, 233 local bills, one House joint resolution, and one House resolution of both houses that were approved on third and final reading. I must say, and with pride, that this chamber is composed of thorough and responsible women and men whose ideas for a prosperous nation echo in every ounce of effort that we put into our work. Indeed, our outputs define us, and so far, we have been up to the task. Let us continue to work hard and make ourselves better as lawmakers and strive further to sustain the gains and realize our aspirations. Congratulations for a job well done. I am proud of what we have accomplished and what we could accomplish more for the remainder of this first regular session. Thank you very much. Mabuhay tayong lahat. Have a restful Easter break.
Mr. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we adjourn session until May 8, 2023 at 3 p.m. The chair hears no objection. The session is adjourned until May 8, 2023 at 3 p.m.